Well, it is time to get down to the business, and I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, Mr. Jason Black, and it's been a little while here, but a lot has occurred since our last critique, hate, or debate. So this is the program that takes the outrageous risk of doing some of these things here that we do. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, is before I do anything else, I want to go ahead and uh, make sure that you all are aware of what's happening here. So I got a couple of folks who will be joining me. Tina is here. Um, I've tried to brace myself for this one, let me tell you. I've tried to brace myself for this one. So, <laughs> however, I got another special guest in the building here tonight. Uh, none other than my man, Isaiah Washington. And he's the first person for tonight's roasting here. <laughs> Mr. Gray's Anatomy, P Valley, Corsicana. It was taking out a little bit of time today because he's the first person who's going to roast me here tonight. <laughs> all right. Let me tell you, this is going to be our critique hater debate program. Let me tell you all what happened since we're far enough away from it now. That's why he's laughing. <laughs> all right. It was about December of 2021. And I'm sitting up here fretting because I wanted to buy another company car. And I'm trying to decide what to do. And you know me, I'm from the South. So I'm looking at a Escalade Navigator or something like that. But I decided the last minute I was talking to my then girlfriend at the time, like, okay, let me go ahead and see if I can get some extra information. So I call Isaiah and I'm like, you know, Isaiah, I'm looking to get in a Range Rover or a G-Wagon as a new company car. I'm kind of leaning towards the Range Rover, but I don't know. What do you think? And he said, Jason, you want to get a G-Wagon. That's what you want to do. I know you're from the South, y'all country. I know y'all all about Escalades and Navigators, but... For those of us from the big city, we want to let you know it's time to step your game up. So if you really want to step your game up, a Range Rover is nice, but it's ubiquitous. A G-Wagon makes a much better presence. I'm like, okay, Isaiah, I hear you. But you see, it's December. And Mercedes had announced that they were discontinuing the G-Wagon so they could bring out an electric model in a couple of years. And I'm like, Isaiah, but they're discontinuing the G-Wagon. The prices are shot up. Jason, they are... They are not going to discontinue the G-Wagon, Jason. That's not going to happen. I'm like, okay, Isaiah, I'm looking at Mercedes' website. They're saying it's discontinued for 2022. Jason, I don't care what they're saying. It is not, they are not going to do that. Isaiah, I'm looking at the Mercedes press release. It says they're discontinuing it. Jason, listen to me. That is not going to happen. Isaiah, I'm on YouTube with the dealership. They're saying <laughs> They're discontinuing the G-Wagon. Jason, I'll believe it when I see it. They say that every year, and it don't happen. <laughs> Lo and behold, I'm sitting here saying, okay. So I did all this running around and stuff, and actually I was getting ready to go down to Miami because I was going to go ahead and surprise her with something. And I'm like, okay, Isaiah's telling me this is not going to occur. So I'm thinking, okay. Lo and behold, the new year comes, nothing. There's no 2022 models or anything. The price for the base G-Wagon shot up from $130,000 to $180,000. I'm sitting here like, boy, I'm going to be on the first thing with wings to whoop Isaiah's ass because he assured me that this was not going to occur. So I'm sitting there fuming. It's been a couple of months. I'd have bought something else instead because uh, Escalades make the world go round. So then I'm coming up here and will someone explain to me the price shot up and everything? Someone please explain to me why it is. It's about March and I go check back just for spits and giggles, just to go check and see how much the price is shot up on the G wagons. Will someone please explain to me why they had 2022 models listed? Several, a couple months later, nothing in January, nothing in February, then all of a sudden, boom, 2022s. I'm like, this must be a misprint. Nope. No, it isn't. Nope. I go look at it, and lo and be damn me hold, <laughs> in about February, Mercedes puts out a new press release <laughs> announcing that the G-Wagon has been reinstated <laughs> for 2022. 
And let me tell y'all, I was about to be I was about to be one of the dumbasses out there trying to figure out, well, you know, if I if I sell a house, maybe I can get the hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> if I sell a house, I might be able to do that. I didn't listen to Dammy Isaiah and the price never went up another twenty thousand dollars. So that was what in the hell happened. I said, boy, I've been waiting for months. I was like, should I tell him? Because if I say it, I say it's gonna be like I tried to tell you that it's not gonna happen. I believe it when I see it. That's not gonna happen. I've been sitting for months. I'm like, now I I need to say the truth because I don't want to lie, but I'm like, I'll be damned. And Isaiah's been calling me, I've been dodging him because oh, I'm like, if I answer you the phone, been calling me back. I'm like, what's he doing? He must be really busy. Oh, I'm like, man, if I answer this here. damn phone, I'm gonna have to tell him what the no, hell no, actually hey, happened. Hey, hey, one thing there's a no judge free zone over here. I know what I know. I've been on this planet 59 years. I know I don't look my age, but I've seen a lot and I've done a lot and I've made a lot of mistakes in business. Um, first thing you don't do, you don't give somebody the power of attorney of your money. I didn't know that when I came into the money. I no one. I didn't, I'm first generation wealth, right? So no one told me you don't give anybody the power of attorney. I learned the hard way that I thought I had four accounts and it was less about a million dollars taken from me and I uh, realized that, oh, okay, I got seven accounts that I didn't know about. So you, you, you live and you learn. But the one thing about the G500, it's an Austrian built car. It is a tank. My attorney has one, has been driving one for the last 10 years. I drove it for 13 years. And when I did so, and I told you the story, I, I finally got rid of it because, you know, in LA, it's still, a, 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 you know, it's not that popular. You know, you don't, wealthy people have it. And when I first got it back in 2002, the only people that was driving it was Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Keenan Wayans, and Mike Tyson, and me. <laughs> so you were, I, we were targets. So if it, if it, if, if the cops pull you over, you want one of those four people, and you had one, then they figure you were a drug dealer. So they didn't recognize my plate. Sometimes I had it in my, my wife's name or a different or alias or whatever, sometimes uh, leasing it or whatever. So I get I got tired of being pulled over. Uh, so I finally, you know, got rid of it and walked off the lot at CarMax with three cars because I think I got $90,000 for it then. And that was like maybe 10 years, I don't know, years ago. You know, I stopped driving maybe 2014. They don't lose their value. And I learned the hard way through Mercedes. Not the hard way. It's just a guy told me. He says, I got to let you know, we can sell this thing for anything we want. We're going to give it to you for 90. Next year, don't worry about it. We'll just give you, we'll charge another 5,000. We won't get you to the 100, 100. This is what there's, but we, we just let you know, every year we say we're going to discontinue it. But just know, Mr. Washington, we're going to have the 2004 for you. We're going to have the 2005, the 2006, the 2007, the 2008, the 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. Every year, they discontinued the G500. But I knew I'm getting mine. <laughs> and I'm just sitting here the whole time. Like, Man, now, if I talk to you. And they I'm told me not to tell, tell you what I told you. I wasn't even supposed to tell you that. <laughs> Well, it, I'm, I'm glad you told me now, at least, because I'm telling you, I was bouncing off the walls when January hit and that price shot up to 186. And, and, and people going to spend it. They're going to get that money. They're going to get it. But what I also should have told you is like Floyd Mayweather, when he went to uh, Michaela Broker right there in Atlanta, I'll give her a shout out. She's a, a Mercedes dealer right there in Atlanta. Love her to death. Haven't met her. But when I get mine again, I'm going to go straight to her. Do what he did. He walked in with cash. He walked in with like maybe 80, 40, 90, 100,000 dollars worth of cash. Walk in with cash, like in uh, exit wounds, DMX. Just walk in and get the lab again. Just, just walk in with a bag. And then they're not gonna they're not gonna sit up there and negotiate with you and ask you for another 50, another 60. They're gonna take that hundred. They're gonna take that whatever you come in with cash, they're gonna take that. And then they're gonna tell you. Don't tell anybody I sold it to you for 90000 because <laughs> you got the cash. Well, if you come in there trying to finance or lollygag or you want to do this and that, man, by the time the taxes and registration, man, you're going to almost 
paid two hundred, close to one hundred eighty nine thousand dollars for that vehicle, man. And they're gonna take that extra ninety thousand from him, and you can walk out with cash for the hundred. And it holds its value. It's a solid vehicle, it holds its value. I stand by it to this day. Yeah. Well, like I say, it, it, it the crazy part of it, like I say, when I first started looking at it and stuff, and it was, uh, it was just to do my due diligence, of course, you want to go ahead and do that. A matter of fact, I, I had taken my then girlfriend at the time to go take a look at it, and she was like, eh, it doesn't look like much. Soon as she saw it in person, oh, she was gasping and everything. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's ugly. Very, so yeah, on the outside, it's understated, but when you take a look at the inside, they really did a great job, especially on the uh, current well, it's presidential. generation. It's presidential inside. Now the rear seats are a are a prison cell. Now I will say that yeah, they're just real tight. Yeah. yeah, but the Audi, if you want more room, get an Audi Q7. That's what I have now. Audi Q7, pound for pound, it's less money, uh, but pound for pound, the, the the Q7 V8, solid vehicle. Just as not as physically strong, has more fiberglass fiberglass on the body than the. Um, in the G5, it's still a lot. A lot of people don't know it's it's a lot of steel on that vehicle, and in some points has iron. So you're not gonna get great gas mileage. You're probably gonna get maybe maybe 13, 14 miles per gas to the gallon per mile. Um, so if you, you you're gonna spend a lot of money with these gas prices. I remember when when I had mine in 2009, and the, the whole thing went upside down, and the, the stock market crashed. The gas gas prices went up. Then I was, it was costing me $150 then to fill the tank up, almost $200 to fill it up. Okay. Well, that's, it's costing me now about a hundred for me to do it now. So welcome to what was old and <laughs> new again. But uh, well, you can always, what did you end up getting? You never told me what you ended up getting. No, what I did, I, I ended up getting, looking at a navigator and an Escalade. Oh yeah. So, okay. Um, the navigator. Yeah. You can always, if you're leasing or buying or whatever, you can always, you can always figure it out if you're purchasing it. You can always oh, yeah. trade that in and get that, and let them knock something out. But you got to bring cash, man. Oh yeah, cash. absolutely. Well, like I say, it's really about getting in position because you times are times are crazy oh, right, it, now. Uh, right now. It's one thing to overpay a little bit. It's another yeah. thing for them to yank the economy. Well, well that car, thing. that car really, they know wealthy. See, there's a difference between people who are wealthy and people who are rich, and that car attracts wealthy people. And they deal with wealthy people every day, all day long. Wealthy people don't go into a star, a, a Mercedes or a Lamborghini or Porsche, and ask how much the car is. You, they don't, they don't even, they don't even ask for the quote. They pick one, two, or three, and say, "Do the paperwork." That's what they're used to with the G5 and the G55 right now. They never some some places don't even put the sticker. Uh, and it's illegal by state by state, but a lot of people, they don't even put the sticker up on the on the, on the window of these luxury uh, dealers because they figure if you're in there, you could afford it. Yeah. And G500 was always that kind of vehicle, you know. It was always uh, a considered a a luxury vehicle, you know, because what happened it 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 outsold. Years ago in the 90s, everybody, because of Sylvester Stallone, everybody wanted the Hummer. You remember the Hummer? Right. Everybody wanted that, that Schwarzenegger, Stallone, Van Damme. Yeah. Everybody like had the, one. And, and Late every, 90s, everybody had it. Yeah, everybody had one. And then they they kind of fixed it up and kind of toned it down and, and, and made it use less military specifications for it. And then they had the Hummer that was kind of like more for family people. But again, H2. Yeah, the H2, but then again, it just was a gas guzzler. People, yeah. even when times were good, you couldn't, it's just, it wasn't, it wasn't user friendly, you know? So when that kind of went out the door, people started looking at the G5. And once people started looking at the G5 and accepting it and didn't say it was ugly and all that, it had been around since the late 80s. Oh, it had been like around since the, the 70s. The, the G, se the 70s. That was yeah, originally, yeah, created, right, the 70s, it was originally yeah. created as a military transport uh, vehicle. Uh, uh, yeah, the uh, of Iran by Mercedes. Yeah, well, well, Charles Taylor, the dictator in Liberia, had one. <laughs> he drove that all over Liberia, <laughs> a black one. That's amazing. You can run down by a G Wagon by Charles <laughs> Taylor. Right, right. This has been around for decades and decades. It wasn't until we get to yeah. 2000 or so they bring it over here and then 
fellas yeah. like you, people like you saw it and jumped on it. And then next thing you know, everybody's like, we got to have it. I, I didn't like it. I, when I first saw it, I thought it was the ugliest thing I've ever seen. My wife convinced me to get it because she's just an aardvark like that. She says, nope, that thing is going to be very popular. You should do invest in it now. And I said, oh, man, I don't know. Okay. And when I drove it, it drove so smooth and and, all the, and and then it talks to you. Then you can you can call a mechanic and you can call, you know, like for example, a quick story. I know you, I gotta hop, let your other guests get on, man. Is I I when I first got my my first one, uh I was doing I think I was doing um uh, exit wounds for DMX or whatever. I don't know, but I was in Toronto, right? somewhere out of town and I got a call from Mercedes saying that my car wasn't stolen, but someone was driving it around. And I said, that's impossible because I'm in, I'm in Canada. There's my car is parked, you know, in my home back in LA. And the woman said, no, we're looking at the GPS and it's at such and such a place on uh, Sunset Street. Uh, and we don't, we, we reached out and talked to the person in the car and it wasn't you and we know you're married and it wasn't your wife. And I said, what? So I'm thinking like, what the hell? My wife got some Negro driving my car around. What the there fuck? we go. Right, I'm like, what the hell is this? So I called my wife. She's in the club dancing with a friend of hers, you know, she, she hangs out with, you know, they all, I, we are a friend of the family. Apparently, the valet, because it's new and nobody, they didn't, they were, no, there wasn't that many around. People hadn't really driven them or seen them. The valet was driving around all over. There you go, bro. Let me, I all just over the city, it. but they have a camera so they could, they, yeah. they could see the guy and see that it wasn't my wife and, and see and tell me that it wasn't, it, you know, it wasn't, they, they didn't know whether, oh, should we call the police? Because it's not you. And it's not your wife, okay? And that's how I knew there was a camera in the mirror where the Mercedes uh, twenty-four hour service people could be looking at you. I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> oh yeah, they can spy on you and everything. And don't don't yeah. you hate when the valets go grab your stuff and when they bring <laughs> you back, your panoramic sunroof is open, your heated massage right. seats are going, the radios blast on some yeah. station you heard of. Yeah, so it was. It, it, and the thing that threw me off is my wife. Was excited, but she she she's lied and said, "Oh no, you I don't have I, we, I don't have a car. No, me and the was such, 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 such. you know because she's got her own GL you know L fifty Mercedes that I got her. So she's driving a another big ass Mercedes, whatever. Like why are you in my shit, right? <laughs> but yours. but it's more it's new and want to be seen and la 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 la. But what she didn't know is the ballet wanted to be seen too. <laughs> For real, so we, we she, don't learn about that. Yeah, so when she lied, I hung up and called the people, believing my wife, and they finally said, "Mr. Wash, I'm sorry. We're looking at the gentleman now. Oh, it is back at such and such, and this is where such a such club that I think you want." And I said, "So I called my wife back, and, and she knew, and she says, yeah, babe, we're in the park a lot, and the, the, the engine is hot. I'm sorry, blah 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 blah. We're leaving right now. So sorry. So she was embarrassed." <laughs> The jig is up. Yeah, it's up. But yeah, man, that's a solid car. It saved my life too because, like, when it gets stuck in snow, and you get uh, uh, on ice, I went up hill with my family, and the sun went down, so the muddy road turned to ice. So when it loses traction, you are no longer in control of the vehicle. It starts steering on its own, so it doesn't oversteer, and you end up skidding and sliding. And that car drove itself safely down that hill. It knew exactly where it could find traction. So I'm telling you, testimonial, G500 saved my life and embarrassed my wife. <laughs> okay. Well, like I say, the lady, the ladies love it. It's still in consideration and stuff. Yeah. I, hate I, went, I hate I went all the way down to Miami thinking I was going to surprise something on it. But right. I'm glad you gave me a heads up on it because that whole situation could have gone from bad to much, much worse. So Everybody, from my first critique, hate the debate that starts with Isaiah. I've been dodging him for a minute because I'm like, oh, I got, 
If I talk to him, I got to tell him. Hilarious. How do I tell him he was right about this? I'm like, let me just keep texting him. Maybe no, he'll no, it. it's not about being right or wrong. It's just a lesson learned now. You know, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, by the way, one of my co-hosts said they loved you and loved Jones. So before the yeah. females start geeking out up in here, let me let Isaiah run because they need to remember I'm the boss. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was he was right this time, but I'm. Oh, let, man, man, let, let me just take myself. Let me knock myself off the cam too. <laughs> Thank you very much, brother. We'll be in touch with you. All right, Isaiah, Washington, my dude. Like I say, I, I got to hold this L. So my first critique, hate and debate. I got to hold this L this time because uh, I thought things were going to go one way. He put me on the right route, and I'm like, okay. Did a whole lot of damn driving. Let's hear it for BLM. And I don't mean Black Lives Matter. All right. Well, things turned out. Things turned out. Uh, in the chat room, uh, Rhonda, there's a reason for that. I'm not going to say anything else. There's a reason for that. There is a reason for that. But um, it's not mine to say here. But uh, in any case... Oh, that was kind of shocking. I don't know. Oh, okay. Wow. I wasn't ready for that one, but there it is. I, I'm, I know I'm going to regret these two words. I'm going to regret them before I even say them, but I'm going to say them anyway. Unmute yourself. Good evening, uh, Mr. Black. Oh, there goes that sinking feeling. And by the way, if you all like tonight's program here so far, get, hit the likes button for me because otherwise I'm going to figure y'all hate tonight's program. Let me go ahead and wrap this up because I've taken enough humiliation tonight. By the way, I've taken enough tonight. So I don't need to be reminded of any more foibles. But in any case, go ahead all right. Well, you you know him, you hate him. At least you're better. Uh, hello, Tina. Hi, Mr. Black. Thank you for having me. I can't. At, miss least, she, at least she looks like a wild animal this time. At least, at least she looks like a a wild beast now. At least, at least I had enough warnings. So if I'm gonna get pounced on, at least I have that. Somebody in the chat room said the Woman King. All right. Well, the Woman I, King. All right. I I agree. All right. Okay, Tina. Well, well you, you go ahead and come with it. I can't wait to hear this. By the way, uh, thank you very much. Big shout out here, Jay Freeman Blackman, everybody who's contributed to support nice program here on PayPal, Cash App, or Super Chat. Thank you very much for that. It's here as well. All right, Tina, what's your malfunction? Well, of course, I can't miss an opportunity to uh, vent my grievances. So, um, you know, I always look for this particular program. And yes, I am wearing leopard. Um, I don't intend to pounce, but just in case I came ready. So overall, I've always, it's always been, um, I've always had issues with some things that you've said, but I never really have time to just say them all. Um, so I'm going to try to, to, to summarize this here. Um, at any rate, before we went live, as you know, um, I asked you a particular question and I had a reason for asking that question. Uh, I'll ask. So this one, I will ask live this one, Mr. Black. I will ask live. Do you think that generally speaking, uh, when it comes to femininity, that black women are the bottom of the totem pole? that black women lack as much femininity as other race women. Okay. I'm not going to say yes to that question. I'm not going to say yes to it, but what I will say is certainly there are some extra attributes that do not help an argument in a broad sense. So I think a lot of those tend to get emphasized a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's one thing when it's one thing if somebody puts something on you, it's another thing if you hold it up as a badge of honor. So I will tell you that um, when it gets held up as a badge of honor among the common women, for example, among the rank and file everyday people, when you call customer service 
and it sounds like Mike Tyson just answered the phone, that's not a very feminine experience. Anybody who's been through a checkout line at Walmart, that's not a very feminine experience. Um, when you got females referring to themselves as boss bees or boss babes, that that's combative. And there's nothing feminine about being combative. Men are aggressive slash assertive by nature. So under those circumstances, that's not a that's not a that's not a feminine trait. Now, there are circumstances that uh, certainly instigate that socially and otherwise. And we can get to that later if you all want to. But certainly there are some uh, what I will say is I don't believe that when black women are on their game. No, there, there's nobody on the planet who can beat them, period, point blank, end of discussion. I don't think I can't remember the last time I saw a more feminine being than than Coretta Scott King, Betty Shabazz. Um, you know, I, I don't think I ever saw a more feminine being than that. Um, so with that being the case, the real issue comes with the self-inflicted issues. So as, as a general rule, no, when they are when they're focused, no, there's no problem. When they get together with each other, that's when the problems start. And they start priding themselves on exuding uh, traits that are not feminine. I don't think they think of them as masculine. I don't think they think of it that way, but they are traits that are not feminine <clears throat> at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'll be honest with you. Um, I think you, you gave a very thorough answer, but I still feel like it's slight deflection. And I still feel like I take that as a maybe, as sort of a almost yes. I'm going to be honest with you. And I can only go just based off of the explanation that you just provided in addition to previous programs. To be quite honest, I get literally sick, disgusted, um, queasy, if you will, when I listen to uh, when I listen to your programs and you are going in, I mean, completely in on black women. Um, I think that your theme is no grace or mercy when it comes to things that you just completely disdain. And, and let me be clear, um, there are certain behaviors and things in the whole boss B image as an example that I also um, look at uh, negatively as well. I, I don't I don't condone that. I'll, but I did want to ask a, a brief follow up question to that. Would you say that men, certain men in this generation of this generation have somehow though, um, pride, you know, uh, um, how can I put this sort of, um, helped that bad B image. You know, when you look at certain images like the bad B image, like just for example, like a Cardi B or Meg the stallion do you, or I mean, would you say that, um, men don't have, wouldn't, wouldn't have anything to do with that. Because I see that at least the men of this generation um, seem to be attracted, very much attracted to that. OK, well, first of all, Mega Stallion and Cardi B are media corporate media creations. So there when you say well, when you when people say things like that's something that men would go for. What you mean is, is that something that men would sleep with? And as I warn you all, men don't have a type. We have a range. So if the sole question is, does she strike us as being studdish? Well, no, neither one of them strikes us in that manner. Would they be something that you'd be willing to lay up with? I think the majority of men would say yes. But the question isn't, would we sleep with a female? Because that bar is very low to clear. It's like being the nicest guy in prison. It's not very hard to be. The real question is, would this female be your preferred option among I women? I if agree. you sit down and construct a woman, would she come out acting, talking, walking, comporting herself as Cardi B? My answer would be absolutely not. Meg okay. Stallion, another absolutely not. So if you're just talking about utility, well, that ain't saying very much. If you're talking about as a mate, somebody you have to live with, entrust your future to, lend your resources to, have their back, is this your preferred option? 
then the answer is going to come out no. And even from the men that you think are really, really cool with that. I haven't heard a single man who has spoken about Meg the Stallion, all the males she's been around in the business and out of it. Nobody talks about her in endearing terms, in case you didn't notice. Mm-hmm. The baby just told everybody he laid up with her right before she got shot. That's, that's not a compliment. And that's not a dude who's endeared to you. I don't know if you thought it was. That's not a guy who's endeared to you. That's a fellow who's basically letting you know, hey, you one of the boys, you one of the dudes. He's not treating her in a soft, dainty, fragile type of way. Now, to go back to what you said here before, there's, I mean, there's not just one definition of feminine. So there are different types of feminine, of a feminine being. Of course, it is juxtapositioned against the masculine. But for example, what is considered to be typical Asian female femininity is different from traditional European female femininity, which is different from traditional African female femininity, which are all different from American female femininity. And we can keep going, whether you're talking about Native Americans, Eskimos, um, South America, indigenous tribes, we can go down the list. So when you say fit, uh, less feminine, I see Black women as being a they're a different type of femininity. I'm, it's not something I put side by side with these others and say, okay, here's a cookie cutter matchstick. Here's a cookie cutter match for it, because that's not the way it works. That is anybody who has watched, for example, let's just be as simple as a bikini contest. If you've seen an Asian bikini contest and a Swedish and an American and a Mexican, you're going to see nuances and differences. You're going to see nuances and differences. They're not the same. Yeah, they might all like dresses and they might all like pink, but the way they walk, the way they talk, the way they comport themselves, it's going to be different. With the Asian, it's going to be a minimum of movement. With the uh, South Americans and Latinas, it's going to be a maximum of movement. With Black women, it's going to be somewhere in between. Things like that. Or, for example, there's femininity wearing a dress. And think about a woman in a dress wearing heels. Then there's femininity uh, wearing uh, jeans, for example. Now, she can be wearing some tight jeans, still wearing the same heels. But she's not going to walk the way she did in that dress, uh, nor would that really be as appealing. She's not going to comport and carry herself the way she did in that dress. So what I'm saying is when you say, are they less feminine or more feminine? I think of it in those regards. It's it. I think of it as in those regards. The real question isn't, is she feminine? The real question is she masculine? Because as I explained to some of the guys from the passport bros, I was letting them know that. With that being the case, um, you can have a decrease in femininity without introducing masculinity. You don't have to introduce masculinity to have a decrease in femininity. You can have a decrease in femininity without increasing masculinity. Now, if what you're asking in those regards, as black women, now what does happen is that this grooming that we used to have, does not occur. We don't have older black women grooming younger black women into being those types of feminine beings. So you've got the feminine ones and then you got the completely unfeminine. So in that regard, are they as feminine as a group? As a group, are they as feminine as they could be as a group? No. Are they are black women feminine beings? Yes. Are they as feminine as they could be in this culture today, the way they're comporting themselves? They're not as feminine as they could be, not as a group. Mm -hmm. So, and thank you very much for that explanation. Um, You actually hit on a few points, some that I was actually going to hit on, and I think you kind of beat me to the punch on one or two. Uh, And... um, Uh, some other things that I kind of wanted to address, but the main, I don't remember every single one I wanted to address, but I do remember um, one in particular. I know, you know, again, I was using Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion as um, just pure examples because they're public figures. And let's be clear, uh, Cardi B is married um, and and reaps the benefits. Married married 
to whom? A man that spends stacks on her. Okay. The first thing <laughs> I would say is I would take issue with you using the term a man. That's the first thing I would take issue with is using the term a man. Offset does not strike me or mo anybody else who's seen him as a adult minded, mature minded, masculine being. Fair he enough. strikes you more as a juvenile delinquent with a court date and a guardian. That's who he strikes you more as. He doesn't strike any of us as a leader on any level. He, well, he's got money. He doesn't strike us as somebody who could teach anybody else how to make anything. You have no idea where his came from. You're not really sure what he was doing before he started, quote unquote, rapping. He doesn't strike anybody as a particularly competent individual. Thus, why all these fellows are suing their record label and their management. So he doesn't strike any of I would take issue. First of all, that was she's married to a man. Um, Offset has yet to convince me that he passes the manhood threshold. Fair enough. And I'm glad that you also brought that up. Um, I, my stance here is not to um, uh, judge or, or put someone's relationship out there as just being some sort of epic, beautiful um, example or anything like that. Um, so I, I want to be very clear about that. Um, I, I, I could go on as far as my opinions about uh, about Offset, but I, I really don't even have it. I don't even listen to a whole lot of um, new school stuff. But anyway, that's that's not the point that I'm, I'm making. Um, I was using them as an example. Even you could even take uh, who Keisha Kior or who um, uh, buh, 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 Gucci Mane's wife. She's not necessarily a public figure. I don't. I. I would. I. I probably am with the majority when I say that I didn't even know who she was until she came out being married to him. And you see how she dresses and comports herself. Um. Anyway, again, yeah, not, you don't pick up any of that boss B energy off of her. Hmm. She strikes you as a compliment to Gucci Mane. Not a competitor. So you would consider her feminine with her wigs and her flashy uh, um, uh, revealing clothing. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not really somebody who tracks her in that way. What I will say is she is with an entertainer and they understand they get pictures taken of them. I don't know how risque she has been. I can't speak to that. So I can't uh -huh. say one way or the other. I would say I wouldn't be surprised maybe if she's got some skin showing. But then again, she probably doesn't show up in public very much. So when she does, he wants to make it something that's worthy of people passing around. And just like with the news, if it bleeds, it leads. Uh -huh. Well, if it reveals, it gets shared. Uh -huh. So that tends to be what it is. Folk follow their numbers. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. Then again, we just saw Beyonce damn near buck naked on a horse. So uh -huh. with, and how long has she been married? So with that being the case, uh -huh. I don't know if I would really indict her necessarily considering where she's uh -huh. at now. If you got kids or whatever, you need to keep this in mind because by the way, your kids are going to be in kindergarten with, Boys tell them, by the way, I was looking at your mama. Well, okay, not in kindergarten, but certainly by the time you get to middle school, with folks talking about they saw your mama's butt cheeks, I'm not really so sure that you want that going around mm -hmm. when you get to older. But what I would say and is that Kardashian comes to mind. I'm listening. What I would say is the pictures I've seen of him with her, Gucci Mane with her, you know, they're at the house, they're on the staircase, they're at a restaurant or something like that, they're at an awards show or something, and she's, she's uh, basically. Uh, presenting herself in a proper manner. So well, I, I, I didn't like see anything proving, there to dispute. I feel like you're proving my point because I didn't see you provide this much grace to Sierra when we were discussing her. I've never so, said to Sierra, I have never accused Sierra of not being a feminine being. I accuse Sierra of being a feckless, shameless schemer but I don't accuse Ciara of not being a feminine being. So mm -hmm. when have I ever accused Ciara of not being a feminine being? Um, I haven't said, I heard you accuse her of not being feminine, but you definitely accused her of not being wife material. And that is also a, a topic that has crept into this discussion tonight. Okay. 
Well, I wonder where I would get the idea that Ciara is is not wife material. I, I wonder where I would get that idea from. I don't I, know. She's don't she's know. Ma- she's married just like Keisha Kaor. She's actually a wife. Um, I'm not again. I don't want to dredge that back up because, like I said, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know where I got the idea that Ciara is not wife material. I don't know where I came up with that. So. You you may have me on that one. I don't know why. I don't know what she did that gave me the impression that she's not wife material. I, I don't know where I came up with that from. Someone decided that she was. I'm not here to say yay or nay on that. I don't want to dredge that back up, <sighs> Mr. Black. I just um, you know, I I I, I was introduced to you um or to your program uh by Tony um and. Although I have the utmost respect don't for Tony. Know why, don't know why CR is not wife material, but go ahead, you, Tony. Although I have the utmost and I and I have the utmost respect for Tony and his opinion and 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 what he and his his logic and whatnot, because he's very uh very smart, but we always end up in an argument and come to a head, obviously, when it comes to you. He believes that um the what you deal out is even amongst the sexes. And I disagree. Um, I, I think you show very little grace uh, for women. Um, you give us about five minutes on the time clock. Uh, and and when it comes, and you know, I ask these questions in terms of femininity and black women, because like I said, you, you kind of beat me to the punch on this. But um, the fact is, you are correct. Femininity um, is 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 not there is not a rule to it, um, and it does differ amongst the races. Um, hey, and, let, let me ask you a question here. Can okay. you name for me one one forum anywhere where black women get together on a weekly basis and examine their faults and their flaws without invoking black men? Well, they get together and say, hey, we're having this week, we're getting together to discuss what, what where we could be doing better, what we're not doing correct. You see, because for the men, that happens all the time and it always has. So why don't you go ahead and tell me, name for me a place, a forum where black women get together each week, talking only as a group of women, examining their faults, flaws, demerits, the criticisms against them without trying to deflect. Tell me one place where that happens. Book just clubs. one. Book clubs. Book I mean, clubs. yeah. And that's just throwing one out there. I've been a member of a book club. Okay. Um, we, we haven't we haven't been a member of your book club. So since we can't substantiate I one, its existence, B, its efficacy, what else you got? Because as far as you- as far as YouTube, television, radio, if you could have named one of the four mediums that everybody TV, actually has access to, radio. you would have done that. What What is a forum? Can you give me an example of a forum where men do this so I can understand where you're coming from here? Absolutely. Number one, right here. Number two, the so-called red pill manosphere. In reality, what they do, what they call pickup mm-hmm. artistry, amazingly enough, these are all avenues where men either directly or indirectly have Uh they sit down and have conversations about what they could be doing better. They sit here and talk to other males about what they could be doing to improve themselves, that you're not competitive enough, um, that you are not uh, financially competitive enough, intellectually competitive enough. You're not physically competitive enough. You're not in shape. Men are constantly critiquing each other and saying, you're not up to code. This is the reason why you're not getting the results you want. There's a reason why these guys are able to make the money that they do and get the followings they do because men actually advise other men about where their weaknesses are what you and why it is that females would not respond to these fellas adequately for example if you got a guy who's imagine this if you will a fella who's 300 pounds and unemployed and talking about you know what the females don't dig me well, what kind of female do you think you're going to get under those circumstances? The men don't sit there and tell him, well, you see, the problem is these women today are just really superficial. And these women today, they just want a man for his money. They That doesn't happen. <laughs> what occurs is the fellas say, hey, you're not up to code. That's what they tell them. 
Now, when the females get together with each other, it becomes a different discussion. It becomes, well, you see, the problem is that the men just don't accept a real woman. The men with their stupid standards, well, if it was a white woman, it would be different. Well, if it was a Latina, it would be different. It, it doesn't start and end with the problem is you. There's nothing wrong with the men's standards. The problem is you are not up to code. For example, there are no discussions among the women about them not being up to standard. There's no discussion where women get together online anywhere. You can't name a single YouTube channel where they get together and examine their flaws in, and the fact that men's standards are okay. When they get together, the conversation always, always, always changes to, well, the problem is the men's standards are wrong. They should be used to our abuse, belligerence, loud attitude, being a size 25. There's nothing wrong with me. I don't need to change anything. It's the men who need to change. May I speak now? Slow down. Is that not a true statement? It is because not. I'm, I'm still waiting for you to tell me where is it that we can see where the women get together and critique themselves without invoking men or deflecting? I would like to answer that. I would like to answer that, but it's not going to be a, 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 a yes or no answer. I would like it, it will be. Uh, a yes no. No. Has to be a I, would, I would like my explanation in there as well. I know I understand the okay, question. Well, it's it's not a yes or no. But my point is, when you ask me, when you ask me where the men do it. I was able to rattle off. I never asked you where the men do it. You volunteered ma that. Ma'am, you were the one who wanted to know where the men do that. And I, I rattled off where it was. I'm still trying to figure out. Oh, as an example, yeah. out, the point is, yes, ma'am, reading is fundamental and listening is a joy. Mm. My point is the women do not do this. The mm -hmm. women approach the table from the perspective of we are perfectly False. fine False. the way we False. are. And False. the men just need False. to get better at accepting False. us. That is just some sort of safe deflection or just your ignorance into women, which I have suspected all along, Mr. Black. OK, the, you're talking about Red Pill. You're talking about your program. These these online forums, first of all, they are basically fairly new to the scene. OK, no, this, we have no, they are not. No, they are not. That's you do forums like that is, they are not new. That's another they lie. They are new. not new. No, no, they are not. No, ma'am, they are not fairly new. Men have been examining themselves, first of all, before the advent We're of the internet. We're talking about a We're public okay, forum. ma'am, calm yourself down. You're not that drunk nor silly. Men have been examining ourselves since before the internet, advent of the internet. We had- and, are, and, and, and still ain't Excuse the, my expression. By the Do way- to me you about men examining behavior? themselves when mo a lot of black men still ain't shit. Do so you believe that? Tell me do you that believe men this are just behavior? and excelled in this area of self-examination, and women are not. Continue. Do you believe? Continue this, with the you lie. Believe that? Do you believe that you are demonstrating feminine behavior? I don't right care what I'm demonstrating. What I'm demonstrating okay. is not being railroaded. What kind of female? What kind of female doesn't care if she's presenting herself in a feminine? We're manner? not. That's not the topic of discussion. Is my femininity? Yes, is. That's, that's, we're not going to deflect. Only question that matters. We're not going to deflect from we're not what deflecting. the real topic is. What okay? type of female, ma'am? Do. Calm yourself Examine down. Examine each other. And, calm and that's yourself down, the Tina. the real truth. Tina, calm yourself I will down. when you allow me to finish just, a statement. Just because you are dressed like a barnyard animal does not mean you have permission to behave like that. Specifically, one. it's a leopard. You want to feel me? You want to feel my bite? Because I haven't even begun. Okay. Well, first of all, you have an overbite. You might want to see an orthodontist. Second well, of all, we didn't so come in. here for that. You love my smile, please. Ma Everyone uh, does. Everybody else has everybody else has veneers. I don't see any reason that you shouldn't. But in any case, if you think this is feminine behavior, then I think you think you're doing a service to the women right now. You're All you're doing is reinforcing and confirming every negative stereotype. You think you're doing yourself or Black women any favors? I'm not here to do anyone any favors. That's not what I came on here for tonight. Okay. You should at least be trying to do a favor to honestly. Tonight's not favor night. Reason. 
Well, you should try to do a favor to that if, if at all possible. Women do not, exa- as a group, avoid examination of their flaws. Oh. That's the reason that they can't get fixed. Men oh. as a group, however, at least create a space where they examine their flaws and say, okay, here's what you can do to be better prepared because that's how men well, think. They we're must logical, be doing a terrible job. Linear. That's the way we deal with things. We identify a problem, then we get to work fixing that. We do not identify something we don't like and then say, well, here's what everybody else needs to do because we won't change. But by the way, tell me, since we all have access to Google right now, show me where we can go where black women are getting together on a regular basis and examining their flaws and saying, here's what we need to do better. Gee, Jason, I can't show you that. You're right as always. Okay. Well, when that gets resolved, then you will see things start to change. But as it stands, when everything comes from the standpoint of we're perfectly fine the way we are and that the men are the ones who are messed up and the, what's messed up about the men is that they will not accept us the way we are, that's not going to change. In case nobody noticed here, you don't get to be the poorest people on the planet by accident. You get there because if you're uncoachable, you are resistant to learning, resistant to leadership. And you're all the answers you come up with are wrong. When you refuse to correct that, failure is predictable and inevitable. May and I that's speak, where we're please. at now. May I speak, please? What would you like to say, Tina? Excellent. So I'm going to be clear, very clear. Um, because the thing is, I agree with you. Um, in terms of correction um, and in, in, in terms of checks and balances. I agree 100%. Um, and I'll even go a step further and say, you did make me think about that. Um, I, don't, I, do, I do know um, uh, Black women um, who have, excuse me. Oh, wait a minute. You know, you said, okay, you said name one, Chrissy. Um, Chrissy, are you familiar with Chrissy's show? It's it's called Feminine Something. I have to pull it up. But I mean, no, since you said I, I, I want to think it. about that for a few moments. What she does is so great, wonderful, and well known that you can't remember her name nor where what the name of her. Program. I know exactly who she is. I'm subscribed to her channel. Yeah, um, and you're, also- you're you're such a uh, you're such a um, dedicated subscriber. You can't remember that her name nor the name of her. Program. But she but she does have a forum. You asked me a question right. and I'm answering it. She and- has a forum. You said you were breaking out the Googler Schmoogler. Break out the Googler Schmoogler and look her up. Look up Chrissy. Yes, C H R I S S Y. Reading is fundamental. Okay. I, I think there would be a, quite a number of Chrissies, would there not? And like I say, with your costume jewelry, she's doing her best over there to look this up. It's silver, thank you. Sterling silver. Mm, sterling silver wear, perhaps. I'm sure. But uh, in any case, I'm not really sure who Chrissy is. Um, but she's had a program for a very long time. I don't just sit online all day just listening to different programs. I have a life, but um, she uh, does have a program. And, and so so that go ahead. So let's go ahead and dispel that theory, because I know you think you're okay, right. And her program, her program is centered on black women discussing. Their Absolutely. One hundred percent with each other. Chrissy. Yes, Absolutely. Okay, well, I'm not really sure who Chrissy is, but if you ever figure it out, let us know. Here she is. Okay, I um I've spelled it wrong. It's C H R I S S I E, no. and that's liter and that's literally the name of her channel. That's the only that's like her the name of her channel, Chrissy C H R I S S I E. Okay, now that name sounds a little familiar. Oh, I'm sure it does. I think um, I, I remember a Chrissy calling on your program once, but I don't know if it was the same one or not. Um, she has uh, 219,000 subscribers. Yeah, not so sure if she called in or not, but uh, let me go ahead and see if I can take a look at Miss Chrissy's channel right now. Is this chick got about 219,000 subscribers? Does that sound about right? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, okay. I think I found it. She has like a pink icon with a black female Afro silhouette. Yes, sir. Oh, great. You know what? Let me go ahead and see if I can take a look at this. All right. Um, okay. The Woman King, How the Optics Impact Black Women. 
She's live right now, by the way. Okay, we'll leave that alone. Um, beware of exagger. The very next video. Beware of exaggerated stories used to scare black women out of swirling. Oh, is fetishization only a problem coming from white men? Oh, beating up on black men. Are you really dating out or just talking about it? Therapist fired for trying to save black men. Uh, should I keep going? The traditional black man does not exist. <laughs> Uh, man says fiance isn't a 10. Her response, uh, boy, we can keep going here from anti pick me to submissive more Cardi B colorism. When men tell you they don't deserve your body. Listen, fake concern about unborn babies. Roe v. Wade <clears throat> examining the rejection of quote, good black men. When idolizing celebrity, black love backfires, Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan. Incels, extremists, and manosphere radicals versus black women. Kevin Samuels passing his dishonest fans and their selective morality. So far, I ain't heard a damn thing about female introspection. May I please? May I? And this was, the, and this was the best she could do, you all. May I, may I please speak? You, you, apparently you're just braying and whining here. I went and looked at what you, uh, what you suggested and it just debunked you. Is that a no? Are you going to allow me to speak? Yes, you may bray at will. So she has, Chrissy has been on for years. You're, you're, you're skimming the surface with her latest I'm video. I'm not skimming anything. I just read all okay, of them. Okay, I, just I read them in not. Order. I just read them sir. in order. I didn't this skip This is your program, but this is my voice. Okay. And you I, are now being out of order. I, am, I and just you're read being you are not going you're not going to sit up here and filibuster. Is I read them in the me? order they were I read them in the order in which they were listed. I didn't skim anything. I Excellent. I'm not order. done. May I finish now? You've made your point. Okay, don't say falsehoods. I did not skim anything. I read them in order. It's not my fault if you chose a I bad know, I video. said you were skimming off the top with her latest videos. I didn't say you were skimming through. There's a difference and listening is fundamental too. Those go back four. The videos I just named go back four months. Okay. Not, not just four hours. She had been on months. for years. Listening is fundamental, just like you talking incessantly. So in the last four months, she ain't said a damn thing to correct black women. It's all been focused on attacking May black I men. Finish. I remember specifically listening to t actually several back because like I said, she's been on for years. And I remember specifically listening to a few of her programs where she went down the list and ran the gamut about health, fitness, hygiene and everything complete, a uh, uh, specifically targeted and, and, and for black women. Which so, part about endorsing swirling for black women do you advocate for? I don't care. I don't care about that video. I didn't, I didn't ask you that. I didn't ask you that. I asked. I asked what part of swirling for black women do you advocate? What part of swirling for black women? I I don't give swirling a thought. I'm not attracted to any okay. other uh, type I'm, of man. No, than a no, black no. Woman. I asked you what. How much of the, what part of that do you advocate for? I don't. It it does. How can I put this? I don't care. I, I, I don't I, care. I, 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 like I don't advocate for it. And and honestly, I really don't care if a black woman date goes with a, a man outside her race or not. I don't okay. care. And the person she just it's recommended us to me. Person you just recommended us to has been on an anti-black male campaign for the better She's part. She's not of on an anti-black male the campaign. Part of She's half on an anti-black woman bashing campaign. She is on the anti-black male campaign for the better part of half a year. So the women discuss each other when once every millennial, once every no, millennium. Like I've said, well, listen, um, you know, we can we can go all day. She she yes, has, I can, she I, has can over keep, I can sit here and keep naming off titles all day. High earning husband is stingy with wife. Nicki Minaj, you're enabling the men you complain about. This does not symbolize protection for all black women. She has speak. over seven. She has almost 700. At least that's what I saw over seven. Um, I want to say 700 videos, probably more than that. You know, so for you to just 
pull the ones that you're seeing. And unless we're going to go through every single one, which I cannot stand your ass for that long, then this 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 conversation is moot. I just I gave you an example. I told you I've listened to her. I have no reason to lie to you or any of your listeners. I, I gave you an example of the videos that she has done where it was specifically talking to us as black women um, and, and how to comport ourselves. And I'm not going to sit up here and explain it any further. Now, I had a All point. All you have to do is go to her channel and you'll see that that's not. Yes, anybody please. who goes there can see that's not. Yes, what's yes please. Listeners, go to her channel, please. And you can see it's that's not what's happening. So strike two. What else you got? All righty. So as I was saying, I feel very strongly, Mr. Black, that you have no respect, no sort of love for black women, despite your B1 image. I find your B1 image one sided. Um, I feel that you have nothing but contempt and vitriol for black women. Let me tell you something about black women. We were raised up, dragged up right along black men and black boys. Who we are, God made man out of dirt. Women were not made from dirt. We were made from man. So that's first off. You've even said it a couple of times in your programs. Men are supposed to be leading the charge and they ain't been leading for some decades. Let's keep it 100. And, okay. okay. And why do you think that, why do you think in your opinion that black men have not been leading? Uh, I believe it's a number of things. I, well, I, let's, let's keep it to two of them. What are the two biggest factors in that, in your opinion? I would say it is uh, systemic racism and the obsession with white culture. Okay. Systemic racism plays a factor how? Obviously, because if a man is not, because as we know, a man's, and forgive me if I'm if, if if I'm not wording this correctly. I'm not a man. I'm not going to sit up here and act as if I am. I, I know more about uh, more about men than you do. I, I am not going to be delusional. Um, but we know that a man's um, confidence, basically, it does come from his his, his level of provision. Um, you know, and so if 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 a system is built to whereas either he has better chances of getting locked up. His wages are low. We already know that salary wise, we're not getting paid as much as our white counterparts, male or female. Um, if, 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 if he's struggling, if he doesn't have um, the finance, the financial sense and things like that to, to, to be um, a, a functioning adult, then that net obviously that has an effect on him. And because of that adverse effect on him, it has an adverse effect on his, his woman and his children as well. And it's a trickle down effect. Okay. Do you, when was the last time that black women I self identified as a part of black society? Last time a black woman have, I, I self identify. What do you mean? When, so when is the last time that black women as a group have self identified as primary, first and foremost, primarily a part of black society. When's the last time that was? Can you give me a black male example of that? Absolutely. We're the ones who are going around right now saying that we're the ones who invented the idea of black power. We're the ones who talked about young, gifted, and black. We are the ones who are talking about protecting the black woman, protecting the black family. I will tell you one thing that you've never heard black men identify as strong and independent. I don't believe yeah. in, in, in the Damn. strong, independent uh, black Gina, woman uh, Gina, image. And a lot of black Gina, women don't. Black women you don't know a, us. Uh, like first of all, thinking. black women as a group do not identify as part of black society ever what? since Gloria Steinem and her little, her oh. little Negro pet. Black men have been doing it. Black women as a group have said, I don't need a man. I have a job. So what do you think of Candace Owens? I think Candace Owens is one of the most Olympic sport gold medalist winning bedwinches you could ever imagine. Whatever her positive social attributes may be, they are completely, completely nullified by her 
purely virulent you with the white man status. you're no. you're hurt because she's her because purely, that's her, her beautiful intelligent vir- asses with no, the white man you're her hurt purely, her purely virulent anti-black stance she has no 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 and that's and that's and, and see this is where you're wrong and this is how i know you you don't listen to her that much because she is quite the opposite she does not have an anti-black stance at all okay anybody who sits up here and tells you that there is no systemic racism I don't have to listen to anything else beyond that. Clearly, you didn't listen very well. Which part of when she says there is no systemic racism, which, by the way, is ironic concerning her legal past. But when was the last when have you you agreed with her that there is no systemic racism? No, and and okay, as far as at, her at, making at that, that point, I would have that to point, actually he has nothing that else to offer. At that point, she has nothing else of value to offer. She is completely divorced from Black people and the Black experience. It doesn't matter what her other positive attributes might be. When you deny the existence of racism, white supremacy, and systemic racism, that's it. You're gone. This is not a difference of opinion or nuances one of us is living in black reality. The other one is denying its existence. I don't need to hear anything else. Thank you for that. Now, notice I didn't say a word about her husband or any of her romantic affiliation. Well, you called her a bed wench, so I think that pretty much implies. But you, ha- but the reason why she's a bed wench is because she's sitting up here saying, trying to please white society by saying that racism and white supremacy doesn't exist. Hmm. Now, if she was going around telling them that racism, white supremacy definitely does exist and yelling it from the rooftops, maybe we'd see things a little bit differently. But mm-hmm. that's not what she's doing. You have to mm-hmm. qualify for your bedwind status mm-hmm. by a, to letting the dominant society know I'm no threat. I see black folk the same way you do. Mm-hmm. So what, what what I will say, thank you for that. I didn't know that she actually she said want to, exact, she want to discuss Candace Owens anymore. All I right. didn't know that she said those exact words, that there was no systemic. You uh, don't racism. know a lot. She invokes examples of websites, YouTubers and political personalities. She doesn't know a lot. Folks. There's a lot she doesn't know here. OK, so. um Although I, I do, I do want to address that one other thing you said there. Let's go ahead and have a word here, if we will, about Black women as a group and how Jason Black feels about that. Let me be very, very clear where I stand on this. I am always, always, always going to be tough. I am always going to be toughest where Black women are concerned. That is always the way it's been. That is always the way it's going to be. You know why? For the exact same reason that the coach of your favorite NFL team, what in the hell would the coach of the Dallas Cowboys look like walking into the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, locker room telling the players over there they need to step their game up? What the hell would he look like? That's not his team. This is my team over here. And if the team sucks... I'm going to be the loudest voice letting them know. And even if the team is doing good, if I know they are be- capable of better, I'm not going to accept second best. Not now, not ever. It's never going to be all right because you are the physical and symbolic representation of me. You are the feminine representation of what I am. I am never going to dilute it. I am always, whatever white women, Asian women, anybody else doing, I expect you to do three times better. There's a reason. It's amazing when black women are deciding that they don't want to sit up here and collaborate with the dominant society against black society. It's amazing the things that get done. There's a reason that black women from their hairstyles to their dance to their assertiveness, because when white women discuss being assertive, they reference black women not themselves. They can't name a white woman who asserted herself against chauvinism in the workplace or being oppressed by the white boss. When they when they think about those things, they think about black women. On She-Hulk, why do you think they had her twerking with Meg the Stallion? Because this is just a, a replay of what we've seen before. A white woman acknowledging a black woman's confidence as the prototype. 
That's the message they were giving. And we see this over and over again from uh, bring it on to uh, step up. Every time we turn around, they're acknowledging black women's confidence. Not no damn sick ass black girls rock. There ain't no black girl magic. It's being a black woman, period. And that is the magic. That is it. So no, I am not going to sit here and watch the majestic Grambling State Marching Band and Southern University Marching Band and see black women with their real hair killing the damn game to the point that everybody else wants to emulate that, even if it's pressed to the way that black women speak and talk and assert themselves in a leadership position among women, among women, among women. There's no way in the hell I'm going to sit here and watch that. Everything from the Olympics to the Grammys, there's no way in the hell I'm going to watch that. And then you're going to sit here in front of me and bring me a lesser product? So your white boss is going to get a better version of you than I do? I think not. And let's be very, very clear. In the words of our brother, Phil Valentine, as I've reminded you all of this for over a decade, because I loved it the first time he said it, that as black men, and he was speaking as an elder, but as a black man who was entering his eldership, uh, let me tell you something. We're the leader. And as leader, that also means we are chief disciplinarian. We are the ones who hand out the discipline. And by definition, that doesn't mean you like it. When you are going in the wrong direction, that is our job to correct that. The problem has been that unfortunately to their shame, the modern generation of black women has decided to collaborate with the dominant society and say, we will bow to white daddy if it prevents black men, women, and children from having anything of their own. They've chosen themselves over the society. Strong and independent. You cannot be strong and independent and also be my woman. You cannot do that. You can be strong, independent, and get your ass over there. But you cannot be strong, independent, and conjoin to me. Now, if you are going to be with me, then that means that you are under my leadership. But that doesn't mean you get to pick and choose. If you found a competent leader, you don't get to sit up here and blow up the whole damn society because you're on an ego trip. So no, ma'am, I am always going to be hardest on black women. I will always be toughest. I will always expect more because that's the team that I'm on. Because black women need black men to expect more of themselves. How the hell I'm going to expect more of myself as a black man and expect less of you? Now, that doesn't mean I expect you to do the same thing that I do. But as a woman, you are going to be on point. And when you are off point, that is my responsibility. Not a white man, not Asian, not other black women. That's my job to call it out first. And then the women are supposed to follow the lead on that. Hey, the men have spoken. We're off code. We're out of turn. We're out of line. And you see that in things like the Nation of Islam. You see that there. That's really the only concrete example that we have that shows that. And the women over there, you want to talk about feminine beings? Now, I will give that to the Nation of Islam. Whatever their faults may be, they got feminine beings on lock. My goodness gracious. I remember calling their, 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 the, the restaurant up there in, in Chicago. The nicest female answered the phone there. I was like, no wonder the fellas are lined up over here. No wonder they are. Didn't have to go to Columbia, South America, no other garbage either. They say that team reflects leadership. The only thing they didn't count for is what if you have a team that wants white folk to be their leader? What do you do then? May I speak, please? Yes, if you can address that. Um, as far as what you just said specifically, I guess 
I can't relate to that. When you say things like that, when you say things like women um, submitting or joining with the dominant society, that's not my experience. It's just, and I'm not, I mean, and I'm that being is, that is what you. That is what you say. I, the, I, men, the men who know you have a different story. How do you know what the men, how do you know what story they have, the, these men that know me? Ma'am, because you are in your late 30s and you have had plenty of opportunity to find a sensible, decent black male who would be willing to extend himself for you. And what you've demonstrated is an inability to do that. It ain't that damn hard, but it is that hard if you do not embody any of the characteristics that a man is looking for. And that's usually going to always be a result of, well, I don't have to embody what you want. I'm here to let me be great. And all we have are a bunch of trashy, lonely, little old chicks. They were a little old. Now they're little young chicks. Pets, houseplants, and bastard kids where a man is supposed to be. So when I take a look at you and I see, you know what? There's supposed to be a man there and I don't see one. There's only one explanation. Yeah, she's had plenty of opportunities. She's demonstrated to them that I don't have to do what you say. And once you do make that clear to men, they steer clear of you. So it fits the profile of a female that the competent men are swerving around. Why wouldn't they? It costs us to take a woman under our wing. It costs us to take a woman under our protection. It costs us to do that. That costs something. When I was talking to Isaiah here earlier, let me be very, very frank and earnest here. When I was talking to him earlier about this, I was talking about going down there. Actually, I was on my way to Miami, which is what I was saying. So I was on my way there because it was going to be a surprise for somebody wound up not being that because they decided to get on the strong independent kick. Now, a vehicle still got purchased, but it wasn't nearly as nice as it probably could have been. The amount to which a man is willing to extend himself is going to be directly proportional to the fitness that you show for it. And unfortunately, we have a number of females who are on a suicide pact with themselves because they have a job. And they're saying, you know what? It's kind of a psychosis, really. It's a neurosis. I'll hold on to my job. So you have a bunch of females holding on to a job. And the irony is, well, the, ain't no man going to control me and tell me what to do like a job doesn't control you and tell you what to do. So how is it the job's better than a man is? They've got contempt for the men. They've got subservience to their white employers. They have contempt for the men. Then they get together in groups where they do not question. You know what? Our biggest issue is we have contempt for the men. Let's, identify, let's examine ourselves for a few years. That doesn't happen either. Well, well what I can say, I, um, I obviously cannot speak for every single black woman. What I, what I can say as far as myself is that I don't, although I've had uncles and my brothers, I don't necessarily feel like I grew up with the protection of a black man. I, um, okay, you know what the real problem is? The black boys of the last two generations have not grown up with the protection of their black mothers. Because the women have decided that a pay, that a welfare check, a WIC voucher, or a job, that they deliberately set out to say, this will replace the man in the home. Okay. Now, that's an unforced error. And the women have yet to sit down and, number one, identify this. Number two, give repentance for it. Those two things have not occurred and are not occurring now, despite the men saying it for decades. I That's disagree. not occurring. I disagree. And um, we, how, okay, what does your husband think about that? You know that I'm not married. What does your fiancé think about that? I am not engaged. Anymore? I do have a significant other. Okay, so she, she forgot what she said the last time she spoke. Let's get your act together. You forgot what you said the last time I spoke to you clearly. What was that? I'm sorry. Last time I spoke to her, allegedly she was on her way to the altar. 
Oh, I had no, we've discussed this on and offline. Yeah, the last go. that that there that was an ad, that was yet an actually that was another hey boo. Yeah, but she, that she was, was she was hoping I did. Was I, but I, I I did tell you about a man, but I never told you I was engaged. Yeah. I she told was, you that we were serious. Yeah. We were getting serious and we were talking about moving in together, but I never told okay. you I was engaged. Yeah, she was hoping that I, she was hoping all of us didn't remember. No, dear. I have no reason to lie or put up an image here. Are you kidding me? I have no oh, reason man. for that. I don't have to put up an image. Okay. When's the last time you spoke to that fella? Not the guy I'm talking to now. You're talking about another guy? The other guy? There's a lot of fellas piling up right okay. here. This is great all right. Great okay. life material here, okay. by the way. This is very feminine. Uh, uh, we can name three or four dudes. I, a woman can year. date, and it doesn't mean she's giving up her body. Don't do me. And this is the mm -hmm. disrespect that I'm talking about that you have for black women. You take assumptions. You're okay with implying and calling us whores. Men, right? men don't hang around. Seriously. Men don't hang around women that they're not. Involved. You don't know as much as you think you know about everyone, Mr. Black. So you're telling me that these guys are just hanging around you for your witty personality and your sterling conversation. I mean, that's why you're here, aren't you? Uh, Ma'am, I have a YouTube program, do they? No, they don't. Okay, then in other words, they got to deal with this offline. Do you think I would pull up with this for five seconds offline? That I would call you up and say, hey, Tina, let's talk? Mr. Thank Black. you. Let me go back to answering your original question, okay? You asked me the last time that I talked to the guy that I was referring to before. Um, last time I talked to him, it has been probably over a month, um, and that was my choice. But we're still Facebook friends. And when's the last time you talked to Tony? Oh, I talked to Tony last night. I talked to him you. almost every week. Yeah, you've been talking to him for a decade now. We're good friends. Exactly. But you know what? You're not a wife to any of them. And I don't say that to be demeaning or degrading. I, I get say, that, Mr. Black. I, I that understand. I know what my shortcomings are. I say that to make a very simple point. You are mm -hmm. not different. Than black women. You're typical of most black women, whether they have children or not. You don't know me. Ma'am, I don't know you. That's why I've been reading your life now all this time. Get the hell out of here. That's not the way it works. The men are all having a universal response. You are not different than most black women. And that's the problem. This is typical. That's the problem. There you go. Until that gets addressed, you're all going to have completely diminishing returns until eventually it becomes a situation where you all are getting pets and houseplants at 12 years old and probably getting the kids at 16 is a norm. That's a broken psyche across an entire group of people. That's a problem. You expect the men to just sit back and be okay with that. That's not okay. Men want to be motivated. Men want to be driven. I men want to achieve goals. The quality of the women around them is going to be the chief motivator. That's going to be that's going to be the chief motivator. Now, drive is different from motivation, but the chief motivation is going to be the quality of the women around them. That's going to be it because men, by definition, are minimalists. So once we're taking care of ourselves, we don't need to build skyscrapers to take care of ourselves. We build those for everybody else. But when you have a group of women who have made it clear that they are against you and that they're, they see their job as an insurance policy to defy you, that's not good, primarily for the women. In case the women didn't recognize it, do y'all realize how crazy they look out here right now? Fake hair, fake eyelashes, crazy ass painted on makeup, bastard kids like a school bus, houseplants, addicted to the internet, roaming around racking up body counts all over the damn place, booty shots out of this world on Instagram. That's not a sign of a healthy female psyche. And that is certainly not a sign of a healthy female culture. Now, are there non-black women who do it too? Absolutely. I'm worried about black women. That's what I'm worried about. That's where I am. That, that's where my legacy has to come from. It doesn't come from these other folk. Mine's got to come from over here. And I don't want mine to be a struggle-ass legacy because the women are on some messed up nonsense. 
There is absolutely no excuse in this world, Tina, for you to be sitting here single tonight. None. None whatsoever. And if somebody had talked to you like I do 20 years ago, just talking to you like this, where would you be today? We can only wonder. I do know one thing. Tony's still single and childless and available. And he's actually somebody who would fit, who has actually been with you and would fit. But I don't think that's the best option for him. It's the best one for you, but not for him. And he's not the only one. This is a conversation that Chrissy and the rest of these jackasses will not have. Because there's big money to be made in feeding black women's sick cultural ego. T.D. Jakes and the rest of them. The therapy business right now is a sick, degenerate thing because they sit around telling the females how to destroy themselves. You got therapists who tell them how to keep coming to therapy. You go online, they ask for help. Everything is, well, you got a problem in the home? Pray on it. Got a problem with your man? Leave him. Uh, got a problem with your kids? Go on vacation. Get turned up. And the women are not saying, hey, this is sick and degenerate. The women are like, yep, party on. And let's take everyone down with us. As opposed to everyone saying, you know what? We need to step our game up and go back to having a higher level of being. You know what? Because it's not like this made them happy. You've got more women depressed in therapy on psychotropic drugs, antidepressants out of this damn world. The obesity epidemic is a result of a sad group of women. An absolutely depressed, sad group going all the way down into their adolescent years now. Mama is making her own daughters sick and depressed. And white folk ain't going to do nothing but shove a prescription for Zoloft at you. Because they don't see it as their purpose to fix black women's issues as black women. They're not going to do that. They're just going to shove some Zoloft or some Lexapro at you and say, well, make it do what it do. And when that screws you up even worse, because there's no such thing as a person on antidepressants who is also a fully functional social being, you can go to work. Now that you will be able to do, you will be able to be functional at your job. You'll be able to be even enough, just enough to go answer the phones, be the receptionist, work on the line, be the fry cook. You will be able to punch the time clock. Now that you'll be able to do while you're whacked out of your damn mind. I've had friends who were on those damn things. They could watch a school bus full of elementary children blow up in front of them and they'd just be like, ooh, that happened. But it wouldn't make an impression on them. That doesn't make you a good wife or a good mother. It does make you an okay, it makes you a functional employee. If you're going to have a man extend himself for you, sacrifice for you, upgrade you, do all of these things, then he is going to have to feel that you are as invested in him as he is in you. And that ain't going to be no talk. That's going to be in what you do. And the women refuse to get together and say, we need to have a national powwow, international powwow, to discuss how screwed up we are. And that we are not going to mention the men whatsoever. We're going to talk about us, 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 and only us. We are going to talk about the fact that, by the way, we've made sex and out and body counts something that we live with. A man says he's not happy with something, and we, wanna, we don't want to sit down and listen. We want to exercise veto power, even if it destroys the family. 80% of divorces are filed by women. You got no place to talk with just that one statistic alone. There's not a woman who can express one bit of discomfort or displeasure or discontent about anything when I say that one statistic by itself. Eight out of 10 divorces are filed by the very people who insisted on the marriage in the first place. The women pressure you to marry them. And then once you marry them, they're the ones what run into the courthouse to get divorced. 
And even if alimony and child support were not factors in a divorce, that's still sick and degenerate. Even if a man wasn't going to be on the hook for alimony or child support, who the hell wants to marry somebody who's whacked out of their damn minds and decide that it doesn't matter? No, you're supposed to be in this to win this. Your grandmothers and great grandmothers had this. And somewhere in the 60s, they decided, yeah, we're just going to turn treason against the rest of the society because white the white society will give us a job. And rather than black women saying, this is our opportunity to collaborate with black men and build a strong bulwark, they said, hey, it's all about me. White folk told him, hey, it's all about you. You don't have to listen to those men over there. We'll pay you not to do so. And to their shame, they found a receptive audience. That's the problem. These illegal aliens coming over here, they haven't found a receptive audience. The um, Arab women who come over here, they haven't found a receptive audience. The Asian women who come over here, they haven't found a receptive audience among them. That's why they're hammering black folk. These other folk have not given them a receptive audience. These other groups of women didn't give them that. And until black women change that, they're on a suicide pact. And it's not like it's, it's what it's done is raised hell on y'all psyche. Y'all look old as hell in your 30s. They're whacked out. They don't have, they think they're killing it. If, if, y'all, if one more of y'all sits up here and has to paint your faces on, they've got a bunch of kids, but you can't be happy about that. A bunch of sad ass females showing up at the damn fifth grade graduation and high school graduation. No men to be seen. Don't, they don't, re- black women do not realize how weird and wacky as a group, a black woman with a bunch of damn pets around her. That mess is weird, man. That bull crap is weird. You got pets all in the damn house, cats all over the damn place, cat pet fur all over every damn thing. That mess is weird. They're in college doing this now. Looking weird as hell sitting on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and TikTok with their damn pets looking weird as a mother out here. Showing up at NFL combines all booed up and hugged up on their sons. And then when men call them out on that, they don't sit up and say, oh, hell, I look weird. They sit up here and start arguing with you. You damn right, I hate that. You're damn right. I don't like that. I don't have any love for that whatsoever. But this is an ER. It is an ICU. I got to give strong medicine. If it were a benign disease, I'd be giving benign prescriptions. We are dealing with a life-threatening, severe illness. Ain't no room for anything light over here. The patient is in stage five cancer. And they're threatening to take the rest of us with them. That's the problem. So no, ma'am, ain't no kid gloves over here. I'm not going to have kid gloves with a patient who's threatening to off a hand grenade in the nursery. We're not going to do that. And if the women would make it their mission, if the women were as invested in talking to each other about their faults and flaws as they are about defending their twerking and booty culture, it wouldn't be necessary for the men to do anything. We wouldn't have to say anything the women would have that handled. When you go to a damn grocery store and black women walk around in their damn pajamas and bonnets, don't they say a damn thing to me about men respecting you. Don't say nothing to me about a man respecting you. You don't even look like you're out of the bed that the men been laying on you in yet. Next stop, lingerie at the stores, although there's some hoes running around doing that now. I would agree with that then you cannot tell the men that the men are obligated to give you some higher level of respect than you're giving yourselves in our company after our instructions. We said, get rid of the fake weave. It's the females come running up. I don't want to do that right there. Yeah, because they're nasty, lazy, and because they haven't been groomed or taught how to take care of themselves, instead of fixing it, they're saying, that. well, the men like that. Which men are you talking about? Well, that that dusty, unemployed bass that I got pregnant by, don't you want something better? Well, she says she does, but she doesn't want to do the work necessary to get it. You need your real hair, and the rest of you needs to match. 
but they don't want to fix it as a group. They don't want to fix it. So you cannot sit up here and say the men need to get better at living with an illness. No, the men need to do exactly what we're doing. I've got a zero tolerance policy for that kind of thing. When I see that, I don't have any tolerance for it whatsoever. I have nothing but absolute allegiance to competent feminine black women. But when I come across incompetent black female culture, get ready for the pitchforks is coming. <clears throat> you know, if you had a man, he'd be able to take care of that chirping back there. Um, actually, there is a fresh battery in my smoke alarm. You're hearing chirping from outdoors. There are birds in my backyard. If you had a man, he would go chop down the tree. Just saying. It's a rental property, but I, I get your point. I, I and I, You've been on for over an hour, Tina. I have one more thing I'd like to leave with. You usually do. I appreciate your kindness and, 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 and kindness and allow, allowing me to do that. Um, I don't disagree with you. Um, I, I've never been the type of woman to, to go around as saying I don't need a man. And I'm well aware of that. I'm working on some things, but that's not what I wanted to leave you with. <sighs> this is it. Okay. Um, and this is kind of, and, and, and I'm the point that I'm about to make, I'm starting with an anecdote that's, that's personal. Um, when I was three years old, my father committed suicide. And as I grew up and got older, I began to wonder if uh, suicidal thoughts and therefore uh, subsequent action um, was hereditary. Uh, because um, as I began to get older, and yes, I, I did struggle because, yes, I was a single mom. I have one child, as you know, he's 19 years old. Um, you know, as I struggled as a single mom and was going through a lot of trials and tribulations, I struggled with suicidal thoughts. Um, not to a point where I would actually act on them. Um, a, I'm a Christian and B, um, I, I'm probably too scared to do it, but, um, I would really get into detail with these suicidal thoughts. Uh, then my life began to stabilize and I was no longer having these thoughts for a long time. I was not having these thoughts. Up until about maybe eight or so months ago when I called in to patron and I called in because your topic at the time, it was discussing children and their upbringing. Um, and of course, your disdain for certain things. And I called in asking advice about my son. This was before he called in. Um, and you ripped into me, like you've ripped in me, it ripped into me before, but the way you did it this time, I mean, it was, it was treacherous. You, you, and you said I deserved bodily harm. Um, I have never felt more worthless in my life than after that call. And for a brief time that night, you know, suicidal thoughts came back. I cried very hard. And so anyway, the point that I'm making here, um, uh, uh, Jason, is that sometimes when I listen to your program, I don't feel empowered. Um, there are times when I, now don't get me wrong, I have taken your advice and it has been beneficial, but that pales in comparison to the times where I've listened and I felt lesser than. Sometimes certain things or being said or certain truths being said a certain way is actually anti-productive is the point that I'm trying to make. The Black truth, women. The truth is anti-productive. I think you mean count. Counterproductive. Counter, thank, thank you. I apologize. But, Counter, uh, I want, I no, want I you said the way. Okay. I said the way. I said the down. way. Calm yourself is down. There is no way to. You will not no, misquote me, Mr. Black. I won't allow no, it. There is no wrong way to deliver the truth. You either have a person who. There is, is a wrong way. Calm yourself down. There is. I. You are either receptive to the truth or not. If a person tells you, I will accept 
quote unquote, the truth, so long as it is stated to me exactly the way that I have a taste for. That's in not what I'm saying. I like it, when I'm ready to hear it at the time. That's not what truth. I'm saying. That's not a person who wants the truth. That's a person who wants That's not what I'm saying. You can there be, pro- you can actually make a that. difference in someone's life without beating them up. And okay. you are a bully. If the truth, if a person feels like the truth is beating them up, is the yes. issue with Please, the truth? Twist my words. Continue to twist my words. I am a writer, and contrary to what you believe, I am highly intelligent, sir. You okay. are twisting my words. Let's deal with a couple of points you made there. First of all, if a person is having serious suicidal ideation, that's a different matter altogether. That's not related to me or anything else. If a person's having serious suicidal ideation. Listening to me can do a lot of things, but it's not going to cause that to occur. So if that is an issue, they've got a bigger problem going on. That's number one. Number two, do you empower a broken organism? Now, I want you all to think about this for a moment. Imagine you had a car that had no wheels on it. Now, imagine putting a jet engine on the back of that car. It's a car that has no wheels but we're going to hook up a jet engine to the back of it. No one would want to get in that car because you know you're going to die. So do you empower a broken... I don't leave feeling empowered. You shouldn't. You're not ready for power. I don't feel motivated to improve something. In the words of Michael Jai White, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock because we saw what happens when someone's not ready for power. There's the issue with uh, most black women today. They they just want control and they want power for the sake of having it. They don't want to be ready for it and in a proper serviceable condition to actually handle it. They just give it to me because it's like a Birkin bag. I want some power over here. No, you have to be worthy of it. You have to qualify for it. You know why, Tina? Because power can hurt people. Power can kill people. Power causes a a person who's not ready for power goes off and has a bunch of damn body counts and breaks the heart of the man who would have kept them. A person who's not ready for power racks up a bunch of kids they can't take care of properly. A person who's not ready for power spends all the discretionary income they have as material therapy. A person who's not ready for power resists being critiqued corrected when they're obviously in the wrong. They never take accountability. That's what an organism that is not ready for power does. It hurts everything around it, including itself, and then demands its right to continue doing it because they only want to hear the answers that they want to hear, not the answers that work, just the ones that they feel comfortable with. Problem, a broken organism cannot be trusted to make these decisions. That's the problem. A broken organism does not need power. A broken organism needs healing and fixing, not power. Do you think that's what you're doing for black women? And I'm curious, and that's a serious question. It's not rhetoric. Do you really feel like that you are healing and fixing black women? The truth will set you free, but first it will tick you off. That didn't answer my question. That did answer your question. The truth will set you free, but first it's going to make you mad as hell. And what you get from me is an objective analysis from a person who doesn't have any ulterior motives. I don't have any sexual designs. I'm not getting paid by you and I'm not depending on you for anything. I am the most objective, truthful person you could possibly speak to because I have no other motive for telling you what I'm thinking or what I'm saying other than this is what I'm observing. Everybody else has an ulterior motive, your job, your therapist, your boyfriend, your parents. I don't have one of those. No offense, but if you disappeared tomorrow, the program would still be here. Somebody might ask where Tina went. When's the last time you heard from Tina? But guess what? I'm not sitting here saying, boy, I need Tina. Otherwise, I can't continue doing what I do. So I can do something that nobody else you know can do. I can be objective. Can we be honest? Black women are used to being coddled. They are used to being bullies. 
They're not used to anybody saying, Shahrazad Ali said that two decades ago, three decades ago, that everybody's had their behavior examined except black women. They're not used to anybody telling them an objective reality. They're used to everybody simply saying, what do you want to hear? Okay, I'll tell you that. Mm. Instead of saying, tell me what the truth is, because black women certainly don't pull any punches when they go around telling folks. Mm -hmm. But everybody else is supposed to coddle them. There's the great irony. Tina is a bulldog with her fangs and claws out all the damn time, but she wants to be coddled. Now imagine that. Now you would never know that from the way you would never know that from the way in which she treats other people. Now she doesn't coddle other people, but boy, she wants to be coddled. And as I said, that's not I don't, I don't believe in being coddled either. That is, ma'am, then you haven't been coddled by me, nor have you been abused. You had somebody tell you the exact magnitude of the issues you cause. And what you're saying is, don't tell me it's that bad. Well, That's hell yeah. I said, it all. No, I no, said don't no wish bodily harm on me. <laughs> it's the, it's, 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 I feel like sometimes you're just incapable of simple humanity. Just simple. It has nothing to do with being coddled or wanting to be told what I want to hear. I'm not a child. Correct. You're, 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 not, a you're not a child. You're not a child. And you're not, you're not my daughter and you're not my woman either. I'm talking about basic humanity. Okay, that is humanity. And what I'm saying <laughs> is you are neither my daughter nor my woman. What you have to have in your late 30s is somebody tell you the truth. And if that was something that touched you and bothered you that much, it's about time that something that wasn't coddling and pandering to you made an impression. Obviously, it did. Here's the issue. I'm not here to help you. I'm here to be objective so that you can finally do the one thing that you and most women refuse to do. Help yourself. A woman is not here to help a man. She is here to be his help. It's his responsibility, his responsibility to get off his ass, get ambition, get a job, get results. That's not her job. If she lets him know that his performance is pathetic, I should have slept with your damn cousin. Well, you ain't being humane. You made me feel bad. That ain't empowering me, nigga. She's telling you she's already let you know you ain't up to code. At this point right now, it's time for some strong medicine. She's not your mother. She <laughs> can't re-raise you. She's with you because you're supposed to be a completed man in front of her. No, it's not no time for no soft medicine. She's letting you know you are not up to code. And she's saying it in no uncertain terms. And since you didn't hear, well, you know, the rent ain't been getting paid on a regular basis. Since that clearly didn't alter your behavior, then let's try something with a little more dynamite on it. Since clearly the polite tap on the shoulder didn't change anything. So let me get this straight. The only tools that black men are allowed to use are the ones that don't change nothing. Amazing. That's not an organism that wants help. That's an organism that wants appeasement and comfort, not help. Help means you take the truth as it is given, straight, no chaser. And the only thing you have to worry yourself about is, was I just told a lie? I wasn't. Well, I didn't like the way it made me feel. This isn't about how you feel. Now that you understand where you really are, what are you going to do with this new information? Well, you know, I feel some kind of way. That's a person who does not want to change. Men feel some kind of way all the time. Nobody ever has a conversation with us about our feelings where we get to tell people, I kept engaging in the behavior that I did because I didn't like the way y'all telling me the truth made me feel. Well, yeah, I know I was robbing stores and raping kids and stuff, but I didn't let, you all you all made me feel bad about it when I went to court. So that's why I kept doing it, because I, I felt bad. You would never expect to hear men be accepted or tolerated saying something like that. That we kept doing it because we, it made us feel bad to hear the truth. A broken organism does not need comforting and pan pampering. That's how the organism got broken. A broken organism needs to hear exactly how bad it is, exactly how rotten the situation has gotten, exactly how far it has gone. Because the thing that hurt you is the fact that I speak for the men who know you. 
they won't maybe they don't have the ability to say like I did because either they're worried about future sexual access or they're so close to you that they don't want to say anything that magnitude. But by the way, the amount of harm that's been inflicted on them, I speak for them. That I see how bad it is. Tony ain't no rough and tumble type dude. Tony's a little soft spoken fella. So I know him getting cheated on. That didn't that didn't hit him very well. That ain't no, that, that's not some little thing to happen to somebody like him. That's a big event. Oh, you brought that up. You always find a way to work that in. Ma'am. I just want to say, I just, that's it. Uh, I'm sorry. Tina. But you do. You, uh, you work that in to had, every program. You had no every problem. Program. You had no problem level, leveling that. This is the, the issue you all have. They have no problem lim- leveling unlimited discomfort on other people. But the moment you experience any, all of a sudden it's yelling, I'm screaming, not complaining. And I, no, sir, no, sir. I'm then not. Do, then do not complain about the fact that you came here one night in bad condition, and Doctor Black gave you an extremely strong antibiotic. You have done and, that before, but you, you are entirely cruel that. on that patron call, and I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. You I will. Been- I will let the men around you determine if that's true. But so I don't think they would. I'm pretty sure that they're going to agree with me that, yeah, that's that's right up the alley. So be it. The only person who would really disagree is the person who usually hands out the discomfort. And what I'm saying is if a feminine trait is where a woman is supposed to consider other people first. That's how she gets priority is because she that demonstrates that she sees to other people first. We've got the first three generations of females who are about themselves only. And then wondering why people are coming coming through the door with strong antibiotics. Narcissism is rampant, but it's not just among females. What you just did right there is the reason that the women are broken. What did I just do? Because you just deflected. No, I no, I didn't deflect. Yes, no, you I'm, did. You no, just said I'm agreeing with you. You just said it's not limited to just the females. It's not. You know, it's okay, not. That, that's the definition of that's the definition of deflection. Is narcissist. A that's, narcissist. The def, that's the definition of deflection. Narcissist. That's the definition of deflection. Okay, uh, that's that's just not. I just that's deflection. Oh goodness, I you don't give women. I'm not and I'm not saying that it's your job to give women any credit, obviously, but you're not but you're not giving credit where credit is due because women do correct each other. They do. Women correct each each other about their color of shoes. No, women do not correct each other. Women have not corrected or held each other accountable for their choice, their sexual choices, personal choices. You really hear yourself when you talk, we correct ourselves on the color of shoes, like all we are just some materialistic airheads. They don't correct each other. We are just materialistic airheads. Do you all don't correct each other about your social, sexual, psychosexual habits? False. Okay, then how in the world do you end up where you are if women are doing that? How how are Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion talking about wet body parts and the women are dancing and jiggling to it? So don't get on my program lying like that. Don't do that mess again. Uh, not all women do not hold each other accountable yes. for their personal behaviors. If my men friends, don't say anything, it never gets mentioned. My friends have had, no had nat- the There is no national dialogue going on among the women about their behavior. All they want to talk about is the men tolerating it. The women don't have not, are not starting a national dialogue while they're talking about black girl magic. Can we discuss black girl tragic? Can that become the national dialogue to say, hey, we need to do a gut check on ourselves about our behavior. Are we worthy of being respected based on how we present ourselves? Are we putting our families first and the men first? Or are we saying that everything begins with us as we go on this narcissistic world trip for the fifth decade in a row. Because by the way, right now we have the most broken generation of females ever. It is ridiculous and it's the most broken, tragic, cracked, corroded, discarded generation ever. It's not like they're happy. They're sitting around here with crazy ass smiles, manic behavior, wild mood swings, 
And this is what no accountability and most of all, no competent male leadership or presence does to a feminine psyche. This is what it does to you over the course of decades. If you do not submit to a man's leadership, you will suffer under the world's misleadership. That's where you are today. Can anything be done about it? The men are going to continue doing what we've done, but the bottom line is the women will have to help themselves. We're not here to force it on you, but if you come to us, we're going to give you the medication. If you're smart, you'll ingest it while it can still do you some good because there are worse fates than being a chick in her late thirties. At some point you become the chick in her late forties or fifties. That's when it gets real bad. That's when the knees and the back give out. That's when all you've got are whatever kids you had, they're gone. And you're in a big ass house or a little ass house or a little ass apartment by yourself with all the men that you ran off and there are no partners anymore. It's just you and a TV and a cell phone. That's we got another name for that. It's called a prison sentence. A prison's where they put you in a little room too. And in some prisons they got, they actually let them have things like TVs and stuff. Yeah. And that becomes their world. There are worse fates than this one. I recommend people use a different metric. Tina has been on for quite a while, but thank you very much for joining us here tonight. I think stay out of trouble. By the way, I did uh, put in the link into the, the uh, into the chat room there. So for those of you who are on Zoom, you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, let me go ahead, by the way. Let me go ahead and open up the telephone lines here. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933, your personal access code to the program that all of your favorite YouTubers talk crap about behind your back. This is the place for that. It is a Friday night. But you are invite, invited to critique, hate, or debate. I know that went on for a while, but you know, Tina's always filibustering here. So, no, no nothing unfeminine about that, by the way. You know, Tina says, you, know, you don't believe black women are feminine? That was, that was perfectly feminine right there. That was perfectly feminine. Why would any guy have a problem with that? Why, why wouldn't? And why would any fella not line up for that for the whole weekend? For show. For show. Why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you treat yourself to that for a little while? Hey, if you all like tonight's program, I need for y'all to go ahead and uh, click the like button. If you like tonight's program, in the meantime here, let's go ahead and get the telephone lines up and going here. So the number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Telephone lines are open. I'm checking it right now. So we're coming through loud and clear. If you have a critique, hate, or debate, you have the option of going ahead and giving us a call up here tonight. I don't want folks calling in to talk about Tina or the rest of them. If you're a person who has a critique, hate, or debate, I want you to go ahead and give us a call up. By the way, we give priority to Zoom callers. So if you call on Zoom, that is the link there at the, uh, that's the link in the top of the chat room. So if you call on Zoom, you got that available for you here. If you want to call on the phone, you can here as well. But for tonight's program, uh, I done had Isaiah check me, Tina's calling in, raising hell. But it's an opportunity for you all to go ahead and do that as well. So go ahead and give us a call. I'm going to go ahead and hit the telephone lines here. If you do want to call on Zoom. You are welcome to do that if you do want to call us on Zoom. But once again, that's only if you have a critique, hate, or debate. You can call us on Zoom, but only if you have a critique, hate, or debate. That's the only thing we're open for here tonight. So nobody can say, when I sit up here and say, hey, you have the opportunity to call me up and speak to me directly if you got a criticism or something. For those of you in the comment sections on my videos, 
If you've been told you need to call in, Taby or some of you others, you need to call in here tonight. If you're not, you'll be banned permanently. This is your opportunity to speak directly. No hiding in the comments section. You should be adult enough to do that. Let me go ahead and get caller from area code 903. You're on live with the business. What is your critique, hate, or debate? Hey, Jason. This is Orlando from Longview, Texas. Orlando uh, from Longview. One thing. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. It's, it's two things, but it's one thing. It's, it's small. Um, you brought up, like, gas prices never going back to two. It's 289 over here and 289 in Bozier City and Mansfield, 299. So it's back in the twos. Okay, um, I'm almost certain. One. I'm almost certain I was referring to two dollars a gallon. Let me know when it gets down to two dollars a gallon. I'll be glad to see that. The second one was with that porno lady with the big rack or whatever and the big back, whatever. Um, she was right as far as like like the young chicks. They don't get paid that much. You kind of have to come in with a team that knows what they're doing. So the older chicks do kind of get paid a little bit more than the young chicks. Okay, that, that's a misnomer. That That's a misnomer there. And there's a reason why Bethany didn't want to discuss that. But I'm glad you gave us a call about that because um, she, she basically got too drunk to be able to uh, articulate that. Number one, let's ask some basic questions here. Who is, when you are a new person entering the adult movie industry, who is more in demand? Females 25 years of age or younger, or females 35 years of age and older? The younger, young talent. Okay, so younger females, thank you for conceding. Younger females are more in demand. Right off the bat, right out of the gate, if you're trying to get started in the business, if you're over the age of 30, hell, if you're over the age of 20, it might be too late, but the business is really get they recruit from 25 years of age and younger and to be totally honest 25 is a bit old they really want you 21 and younger so that you, you kind of just proved my point there however i'll keep going you want corroboration all right about these older females you're discussing are these older females and let's just say that older is identified as 35 years of age and older are these older women who just entered the industry or these older women who've been in it since they were 18? That's been in it. Okay. Except so for some of these cam models, they come in. Well, and, uh, and they're not, they're not getting, they're not getting no contracts from Vivid or nothing like that. I think the only one that came close to that was Kim K and that's going to be it. But Older females do not come in making a bunch of money. And the ones that you do say, well, they do make more money. Well, yeah, they started young, stayed in it until they've gained a following. Next question. Are they, are those women, the Jenna Jamesons and the like, are they the rule or are they the exception? They're the exception. Okay. That's the point I made the whole time. Because a chick can be a contract girl with one. If you're going to get a contract with one of these uh, porn companies, you can't get that at 35. You got to be in your early 20s for them to sign that contract with you. If they even still do that anymore. But they're not looking for 30-year-olds and 35-year-olds to make contract girls. Are they? No, not out the gate. No. Okay. Let's so okay. So you, you, say, you say thank you. Okay. So they're they're not looking for a thirty year old to give a contract to. They're looking for a twenty two year old, twenty three year old, maybe twenty five. But they're not yeah, looking. They they're not looking to cake off a thirty thirty five year old with a contract. So okay, she's thirty years old. Let's pay her until she's thirty five or thirty eight. They're, they're they're not looking to do that. That's not the way that business yeah. works. That business does not work that way. Anybody who tries to imply or say it does is just lying. That's not the way it works. If it were, then there'd be 30-year-olds who can't pay the rent who would be getting in the business and making big money all, all the time. That's not what happens. Now, the only reason that the young ones don't make a bunch of money coming in the gate, you're true, is because they haven't gotten a contract. They have to go from one film to another. But once they've gained a name for themselves, they're on their way. Problem, you can't get, gain a name for yourself 30 years old and older. That's not the way it works. That's never been the way it works. Because the longevity won't be there. 
Hell, typically speaking, they're I mean, only in the business for a year or two. Typically speaking. So did that old lady? Well, the porno lady. Did she? Did she come in the game late, or did she come in early and then just got old in it? Bethany, I'm not sure exactly. I, I'm not too familiar. I'm not certain her. exactly when Bethany started. I do know she's old in it now. I mean, let's just keep it real. When you sitting up next to Lex Steele on Vlad TV, you've been in for a minute. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, when you when you're sitting next to Lex, you talking about that. when you talking about you work with Lex Steele. Oh, okay. You've been in for a minute. And I'm not holding that against him, but what I am saying is this is that's this is a young woman's game. You can't get to the big money unless you start as a young woman. You can't get there. Yeah. And this idea that, well, the older females make bigger money. Yeah, if you can make it that long. And she couldn't. So it only works if you can make it that long. This is a young woman's game. You can't get to the big money if you don't start young. And they're only recruiting young females. They're not recruiting any older ones. So it seems like it might be a contradiction, but it's really not. I know it can seem contradictory, but it's not. The older women make more money. Yeah, only if they started young. Mm. Now, if you could show me where they come okay, in older and point. start making big money older, then yeah, then then that would be a point. But that's not it's it's not actually true. It just seems contradictory, but it isn't. Okay, okay well, I was wrong. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for you giving right. us a chance to go ahead and clear that up for you here. Let me see. I had somebody on Zoom. Let me see. Kenneth, go ahead and let's see if we can get you going there. Go ahead and turn your camera on, Kenneth. Kenneth is working on his audio there, so we'll see if you can get your camera on. Okay. Not really sure what's going on there, but Kenneth, you got it aimed at your ceiling or your iPad or something. If you're not going to get on camera, we got to remove you permanently, so let's get your life together. We're not here to play any games with you. So let me go ahead and get you ready to go ahead and remove you here. Kenneth, point your camera at yourself, dude. Let's not play around. Here I am. But okay. you're not on camera. So why should okay. I get on camera? That Be- don't make sense. Because, hey, because, Black, you called, you, so. because you called me. I did not call you. Okay, but you're spreading content to millions of black Americans. But you don't show your face. But you want me to show mine. But I will go ahead and show mine. So a few questions for you. Thinking about the legacy of Adolf in this country, what are we doing after okay. 500 years? This is uh, not this is not really the program for that. Okay, that's, that's not, I don't really discuss that kind of thing here. But what is your question? So, with us having 500 years as Adolf in this country, would you say it's been successful? Are we trying to continue that legacy? Like, what's the path forward? Okay, this guy speaks in partial sentences. Uh, what has been successful? So I'm asking you, what has been successful during our time in this country? Because I recall Austin Holloman has spoke with you about SYSBM, and you had an issue with that. So I'm trying to figure out what are we doing here that's so important that we shouldn't leave. Okay. Show me a place on this planet where black people have more wealth, more upward mobility, and than we have here in the United States. Go. So as far as what we have here in the United okay, States. Okay, I said name the, the place. States. No, 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 no. No explanations. Just name okay. the name the country or geographic location. Name the place. No explanations. Just name the place. So there's plenty of continents in Africa. Countries in Africa. Okay, y'all, y'all know this. I said name the place, and well, there's plenty of countries mm-hmm. in Africa. Notice he's not naming the place yet. Okay. So when you, I'm not so, debunking, I'm not debunking his argument. He's mm-hmm. doing it. So as far as the place where black people have a significant amount of wealth, no, 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 better. They got mm-hmm. better, more wealth, more control, more socioeconomic mobility than we got here. Where's what the control do we have here? Let's start there. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm, I didn't say we had any. Now I'm saying okay. I'm not. I'm saying tell me the place this where they have more. So, than, so this tell me the place where they have. Right? Tell me the place where they have more than we do. 
okay, but why do we? Okay, have now you all know this. He's here. not doing that. I'm not here to because say. We, I'm not here to say how they, much we do they, or don't they, have they, here. I'm saying, tell me the place where black folk are doing better than we've built here. Name it, Jason. We're doing well here as a result of global white supremacy. That's the reason why we're doing well. Here. Okay, I think you're, very wait, well you that. said that we're doing well in America as a result of global yeah, white I know supremacy. What you're going to say we're foundational black Americans. No, no. You're saying but, you're not saying that we did it in spite of white supremacy. You're saying that we did it because of white supremacy. Now, I'm a foundational black American, so I'm not going to say that we did it because of white supremacy. But that's what you I just said. You literally just wealth, said we did it because of white wealth, supremacy. Now he wants to change it, okay? Position is better compared to other countries well of course of it sh- of course it should be because we built the damn economy right so what i'm saying is we built the economy what did we get out of that why are we staying and here? that's, that's the, really the note we have we have not gotten our just reward no okay, we have so not received that around here and wait or are we why not leave and build a legacy somewhere Sir, else? Sir, okay, tell me where that is occurring outside of our efforts here in America. Go. Well, we have been invited to Ghana. Okay, I s- no, we have not been invited so anywhere. Really? Don't give me that damn right to abode garbage. Anybody with a Google, I just bunked that a decade ago. It has not changed. That right to abode garbage is a damn bait and switch. It doesn't mean anything. That's why you can't go. You have a million hoops hurdles go through. You have to have a bunch of people over there vouch for you. You have to get have the Dude, government approve it, million, sir. We got a million hurdles. We got to jump. Sir, here. We, okay, okay. Why then why true? why would I go to a foreign place to jump through hurdles and get less? How do you define less? Okay, if sir, show me. Okay, I asked you, ask, sir, you're just talking about Ghana. Further over there, right? Tell, tell me what has been built by black Americans in Ghana. Go. Well, not much because we keep hanging on to America. Okay, but you can't Our show me, go sir, you cannot. There. If the Ghanaians haven't been able to do that, why in the world would we go over there? Why? The Ghanaians have been subjugated to the same colonization that we have. And yet so we and yet we got point. and yet we got first of all, they invited it, unlike us. Second of all, we did more and better over here than them. Why would I go to people who are subordinate to me? So you view the Ghanaians as subordinate. Why not try no, to sir. With them no, sir. No, sir. I no, sir. I don't view the Ghanaian economy as sub- Sir, li- be, sir, listen carefully. Stop talking. I am not saying that the Ghanaian economy is subservient. The international exchange rate says that the Ghanaian economy is subservient. To the American dollar, right? That's your reference point? That's the only one that matters, sir. So why not take our American dollars and go over there where it's going to go further so we can build more compared to what we're building here? Okay, Here's, here's here's what you need to do. When... An African country gives us the same thing that Israel gives Jewish people. That's the only sensible response. That's the only sensible arrangement. When they give us a right of return. And so bur- uh, no, 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 no. Uh-uh. When they give us right, a ahead. right of return and mm-hmm. birthright citizenship, then I will take them seriously. Because you know what? We fought to essentially give them that over here with the 14th and 15th Amendments. Now, they've got rights over here that they still bull jiving around telling us they can't give us over there. Uh, No, we're done handing out freebies to other people. If we could get that done in the power seat of white supremacy under the most brutal white supremacist regime ever, Bull Connor, Lincoln, Rockwell, we if we could do that here, then they can do it. If they're not doing it, I'm not going to sit up here and watch somebody who's failed try to tell me what I need to do. So I think you misunderstand what I'm saying, man. Okay. You, you, are we at your girlfriend's house? No, nah, it's my crib. She just came home. No, it, it's just, okay. When the woman comes home and you got to leave, that sounds like it's her place. But go ahead. Nah, it's my place, bro. Don't don't. Okay, guys. If, if it's me, I will be telling her, "Hey, baby, you can come back in twenty minutes. We we handling business up in here." 
our business. Okay. But that's gone. Now he's talk. now he's he trying to. Do, we got the struggle for G going on, but go ahead, brother. I'm just telling you right now, if it's your <laughs> if it's your man, place, the females for the lead. Let me get the light on for you, man. Let me get the light on for you, man. Yeah, it's, inside it's, the coop. It's his place, but when she walk in, he got to go out. So uh, something doesn't add up here. But all right, something ain't computing. But man, uh, something ain't computing. Thing? I wish this light was on so I could show you my car right quick. Dude, anyway, do you, sir, do you think your car impresses me? I'm not trying to stunt. I'm trying to talk to you about Adolf. Okay. Okay. Do you, do you think your do you think that that old Lexus impresses me? Well, I had a newer one, but I got rid of it. Okay. Because you got rid of it for an old one. You got rid of your newer Lexus for an old one. You got yeah, rid of your it was newer the first time that okay. it depreciated, asset appreciated. I made a nice lick off of that. Unlike you, I'm not materialistic and worry about buying trinkets from white folks. I'm not materialistic races. either. I just like math. But with okay. to ad hominem discussions, man, my point is why shame people for trying to leave and start a legacy somewhere else? If some of y'all want to stay, that's cool, but what's wrong with some okay, of us Okay, sir, leaving? here's the problem. You have been asked to give us a better alternative to go to, and you all never have that. You haven't had it in Dude, 50 there's years. A number, you there's don't a have number it. Of alternatives, no, sir. You cannot show us a better. Like, you cannot show us a better one. So what have you shown? Okay, now th take a look at what they're saying here, folks. Well, you see what it is. So, sir, if you can't name a better alternative, you have no point. Dude, any country we go to is going to be better than America because our money is going to stretch longer over there. How's your money going to stretch longer we, if it's not? We can build. We can income? build more properties. We can own more businesses and control more assets than we do here. Show me a show so me a foreign show me a foreign country show me an only African two, country only, where white folk don't run it. Okay, Zimbabwe. Okay, let's talk about Zimbabwe's currency. Let's talk about Zimbabwe's government. Let's talk about Zimbabwe's attitude toward Black Americans. Considering you twice as old as me i would love to be educated. let's just dis let's discuss let's zimbabwe's it. currency the hyperinflation while i do understand that some of that does have to do with the colonial powers zimbabwe is still trying to get its act together let's talk about zimbabwe's cultural structure they are still not on one page over there about what they should do especially since robert mugabe let's talk about their attitude toward black americans while they are not openly hostile to us once again no right to no right of return, no birthright citizenship. I cannot get jiggy with these. So you're saying that the solution is to stay here and keep begging these folks. That no, don't like sir. I'm saying that, that we got together. If we got together, Africans didn't have to come over here mm -hmm. and pressure us to make the environment hospitable to them. I don't need to go over there and pressure them to make the environment hospitable to me. If they really were on that, they'd already be doing it. They're not doing it because they don't want to work together. You guys have this pipe dream that there's some pan-African coalition going on and there isn't one. I'm just not being a fool and sitting up here being delusional about it. You don't have a friend over there. So you got an ambition to have one. Crimson reparations, right? That's what you rather do instead of just working with your fellow brother, regardless of what country they come from. They okay, they have they haven't demonstrated they right? have not demonstrated brotherhood. When you can get that white going, let me know. Either, but you keep begging them for reparations. I'm right? not I'm not practicing brotherhood with white supremacists. I'm practicing brotherhood with black Didn't people. You say you buy your guns from a dude that got a Confederate flag in his office. I bought one of them there, yes. I'm not oh, okay. practicing. I, I really I'm not practicing terrible. brother. Uh, sir, if you think that me doing that was assigned to him a brotherhood, you might want to ask him what he thought about that. You shook his hand? No, I don't shake hands with people I buy weapons from. No. Anyway, and, there, and there's, and there's no. The well, first of all, first of all, I didn't have to actually shake hands with anybody. I just had to get the box from the FedEx driver. That's the first thing. But second of all, uh, no, sir, I'm not here to practice brotherhood with white supremacists. I'm here to practice brotherhood with black folk, and okay. I don't, and so, I don't so, have to leave where I am to do that. So, so, Jason, let's stop right there. If you're practicing brotherhood with black folks, then why not build with Africans and Caribbeans? who have a homeland, who have another country that we can once, get resources Once from. again, you have not demonstrated that they are trying to do that. You're trying to impose it plenty, on them. I know plenty anecdotally that want to do There it, you go. Okay, well, let me, when you happen, get them as a group, it harder to do that. sir, it doesn't, we as a group are on the same page over here as a group. They're not on the it, same oh, page oh, with oh, us oh. as a group. Okay, so we as a group 
of black Americans are on the same page, right? Then why don't we have strong black families? If we're really on the same page, we can't even get our family structure. Sir, I'm talking about, no sir, I'm talking about recognizing that white supremacy is a problem. Okay, recognizing that's a problem. So what is your solution? Okay, stop. As a group over here, we recognize that white supremacy is a problem. Our voting okay, patterns, our voting patterns and socioeconomic trends demonstrate that these other folk have not shown that at all. They dance and scrape and bow and jump in the streets if the queen dies or if a white man shows up. We ain't like them. So if I'm not mistaken, Jamaica is actually in the process of suing in the, the process UK for reparations. Okay, whose lead? It's like we're who's, in the process who's, who's lead did they? Okay, how right? does that help us? Okay, this is what I'm saying, Jason. Every other ethnic group, and I'm I'm talking to you as a brother, man. I've listened to you for quite a while, but there's just one thing that's always kind of made me want to reach out, and this is it. Other groups have their own homeland that they can do commerce with, but your rhetoric makes it where we're trapped in this American society. Our home, sir, we have our homeland. Our homeland is right here. Bro, so you're saying that we're going to compete in a race? Sir, country our homeland is our homeland is right of here. Bridging and building alliances globally. Okay, sir, that does not change the reality. Our homeland is right here. You're saying that we need to flee our homeland, bro. Yes, fuck this place. I'm, I don't know why you want to hold on to this. Like, can okay. you explain to me? Here's a, here's what I want so you to here's what I want you to do to answer that question you just asked me. Well, why would you want to stay here? So you, you're a okay, patriot. sir, That's sir, what you're me, right? sir. You're a patriot. No, what I'm saying is that I deal in concrete facts. So here's your proof. If you want to substantiate the statement you just made, why would you want to stay here? Well, yeah, I want to flee. Go and build whatever this is that you're talking about. You can do somewhere else, and then give us something to come to. Oh, absolutely. I okay. Got, I'm getting my and, money here. And all I'm right. Leaving. I'm not going to stay here like y'all. When you have that, sir, when you stop talking about it and being about it, then we'll listen. I already to am you. about it, sir. I don't know. So you, you got the job done? Years old. You got the job. No, 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 no. What you got either. done? What do you have done over there for us to leave here and go to? Well, I haven't done anything yet because I'm all 30. right I'm in, in that case then i'm in the process just then, like you're sir, in the process right then come and back come back to us sir no, come back to us when you got something tangible to present well right I'll now you got you pipe you dreams really got reparations sir you got yeah, pipe you, you have pipe about. dreams sir you don't actually you have got pipe something. dreams too selling these dvds and shit but do we have reparations after all this time, no, we don't, sir. You so don't, sir. You, sir, you don't even have a roof over your head right now. No, I actually do. And, sir, you're literally walking down the block because your woman just put you out, and you're trying to tell the rest of us what out. to do. Didn't even talk. Okay, I'll go back right now because I think you want to see me in the light. No, so no, sir. There's, there's, there's sir. There's tomorrow. light. If you keep walking, you're gonna be in Abilene, Texas. If you keep walking. Man, you know why all I'm it at. took was Thanks a female to, a female showed up and he's literally sprinting down the street, but he's gonna Man, lead us. I'm gonna walk right back and show you how I handle mine. Okay, well, dude, you got a while to walk back there. Give us a give me a holler back when you actually get there, and maybe we'll see what we can do then. Let me put him back in the waiting room when he gets his act together here. In the meantime, let me see here. Yeah, y'all, he's He's building Wakanda. He's building Wakanda. He's he's building Wakanda. You talking about conquering Africa? You need to conquer your damn living room. Though he's he's gonna fight white supremacy, but he hasn't conquered the woman who just walked up in there. All right, let me see here. Uh, Richard, Richard. Okay, Richard, stop, stop trying to talk. Hey, Richard. yo, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm okay. sorry. I'm sorry. Audio wasn't on now? just yet. Okay, there you go. Okay, my bad. Sorry. All right, that. Richard, sorry, what's on your mind? What's your critique? Hater debate. All right, I mean, um, first of all, I want to say big, big appreciation for this platform. Uh, we need this desperately because if you outside the black media, literally nothing else uh, supports the positions that are productive to what we need as you know like as a collective and um also i've saw saw race war excellent documentary i 
brought that one first because there were digital copies there. I, I wish there were digital copies of the other versions. If there aren't, I didn't find them. Um, for one, I, I guess I'll get into my main point. Uh, please. <laughs> All right, 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 right. So I know one of the 48 laws of power is you have to appeal to people's self-interest if you want to get anything out of them. So I'm wondering what approach we could use with reparations to take that strategy for one. And two, I know I'm risking plebiscite babble, which I don't want to do. No, but, just pile it with the previous caller. That, that's apparently what Zoom is for tonight. So go ahead. Oh man. I look, I look, big respect. Like I'm not, I understand. I get where you're coming from. Appreciate that. But all right, so if there are already reparations for Native Americans and hit our history has been hidden and in fact there are a lot of black people that were already here shouldn't that just be a layup that if we can use the already abundant evidence that shows that we were here then aren't we just as entitled to what they already set aside like, well, I mean, I mean, yeah, but here, here's the real thing, okay? I don't want everybody to get stuck on, quote, reparations, because my platform has always been reparations across the board. This is not simply about cut the check. Absolutely, that's definitely required, and that's definitely the priority. But when you talk about establishing a socioeconomic foundation and establishing our socioeconomic uh, potential, then that that doesn't we have multi prongs reparations is one part of the agenda but we got multiple prongs so when you talk about a black business district that's something you can do as an individual or as a group of people when you talk about having you know your own black enclaves that's something you can do as individuals that doesn't require a conversation about reparations but we've already we already done all that well, Actually, we, we, uh, we, we've we've done it in some places. Very, very true. But we need to have a for real renaissance about that right now. We do. When you say some places, what, what, I, I mean, I know with there being places that had, where we did that all over this country that were burned down. Like it's like building a sandcastle with a bunch of waves coming at top, at the, after each other. Like, well, yeah, I mean, close? but yeah, you're in a war zone. Right. Yeah, I mean, so, of course you're in you're in a war zone. I mean, you're trying if you're trying to build a cat, if you're trying to build a grocery store in a war zone, just expect for there to be some difficulties. A hundred percent. And like I said, I don't want to oversimplify it, but what is the flaw in my position where if there are already set asides for indigenous people, if we and they specifically did the uh paper genocide against black people that were already here, this is a known fact. Well, then here, uh, here's the, the issue. Already. Here's the issue. You, the reason why we're starting fresh is because you don't want to use any of those other pre-existing terms. The reason you don't want to do that is because those have already been infiltrated by non-black people. So when you say indigenous, you got a number of these five dollar Indians who claim indigenous status already. So if you keep piling on that, you're basically heaping on more benefits for them, not less. So if to deal specifically with us, that's why we need to give ourselves a specific label that excludes these others. Otherwise, they all just come piling in after behind you and say, hey, I'm indigenous too. 100%. And then you and Tariq Nasheed have been pioneers of the FBA movement, which handles that. We have a specific strategy for distinguishing us as a specific group. So we're how are we going to have five dollar FBAs? Even if there are, there are enough of us that if we get if enough of us get it, that'll be just because Native Americans screwed up their reparations doesn't mean I, I highly doubt we'll do that. Yeah, but I'm, I'm okay. But bang. just to cut to the chase, though, going off of what you said, we uh, we're not going to be able to piggyback off of other folks because that leaves you too vulnerable. Right. You're going to fall into the minority category. You're going to if you you can't use what other people's paperwork to get something for us. That would be us walking into the trick bag. We have to have a clean slate. 
We are not going off of any pre-existing arrangements, any pre-existing anything except our claim, which has always existed. That's all we're doing. But as far as any agreements or payouts that the government has already made, no, we want no part of any of those because we know what's going to happen. You're going to claim that you're going to carry us over into it. And when you get done, we'll be getting 2% and everybody else will be getting 98% the way it is now. No, clean the board, clean the slate. We're starting with a clean slate and a white board with something that we set the rules for from the ground up. There will be no debate, no argument, no anything, because it's a clear understanding of exactly who this applies to. Yeah, they tried to put the lemon twist in like in California. You stiff arm them and stop them. That's how you build a proper functioning apparatus to give reparations to your people. That's how that works. You can't use anything pre-existing. It's already tainted. I don't disagree with anything that you're saying, but that that's a play. What I'm talking about is a layup. Like there's already stuff that's set for us. And I'm 100% confident that if we got even a small percentage of what they got, being a protected class so the race soldiers aren't out there killing us like the way they do these other minorities, if we just get that, or if we just get them to stop specifically targeting us, that's literally all we need. Like we've well, done I mean, way you need, more, you need more. You need more than just that. But certainly um, right now, the political class that you have is working against us. So 100%. We, part of being on code is recognizing that the James Clyburns and their ilk across the board, they have to go. So as far as that's concerned, absolutely all of them have to go at this point because they're not carrying any type of agenda for us. Simple as that. I, I get that, but it's like we have entitlements that are on the table right now that they already agree that indigenous people get. So we, it's like they're eating our, okay. what belongs sir, to us. Sir, yep. all I'm going to say sorry, is as wanna... soon as you say indigenous, you're going to be fighting to expand the benefits for somebody else. That one is that well is already poisoned. I'm not I, I'm not gonna just keep repeating it, sir. I, got I understand what I got you're you. trying to say. That well is already poisoned. If you fight to expand the benefits that have the word indigenous in it, when <laughs> they get done, it's only gonna benefit those other people. That's all it's gonna do. You're fighting uh, for the in your mind, you're clear on it. Here's the problem: they know what you're trying to do which is why they keep rigging it with these self-sabotaging things like indigenous, minority, black and brown. You, you can't do that. I, I don't know how many different ways to say it. You cannot do that. You have to start clean. If you're going to push for those things, it has to be made clear who it is for from the beginning. It cannot piggyback off of anybody else because I haven't seen a single thing that we tried to piggyback off of that worked. It's not going to happen. They're ready for you. They're ready for you. All they're looking for you to say, yeah, we need to put, that'd be like me saying, we need to put more money into minority business grants. That, well, this is already in place. You know, Jason, it's already there. This is a layup. This is alley-oop. It's already, no, it is not. No, it's not. It would be like I, trying to, it would be like trying to drown an ocean. The more you try to fill it up, it's just going to get diluted into itself. You can't fix this thing the way you're talking about it. The ones that already exist, if they were ever going to do anything for us, they'd have already have done it. They're not doing it because they're not intended to. So I understand what you're trying to say. It won't work for that reason. It will not work. Thank you very much for checking in with us here tonight. We appreciate that. Let me go ahead and put him back in the waiting room here. By the way, as I said, um, He's, he's running around the whole damn neighborhood over here. I'm going to get to uh, my folks on the phone lines here in just a moment. But uh, let me get uh, Mr. Struggleese here. He's doing laps around the block. Go ahead and turn your camera back on, sir. I'm going to give you five seconds here. Turn your camera back on. There. Um, I'm, okay. I'm back, my dude. She let you back in the house. All right, good. Or he, he's, off, in somebody's, this, he's in somebody's house. I don't know where he's at. He's in somebody's this house. This is my spot, brother. Okay. This is my spot. My name on the lease. Unlike I still, I still hear crickets. A whole bunch of I dicks. still hear crickets. Yeah, outside. Okay, I'm there he goes. Inside. He can't go in his own day. Quote his own she house. Right here. Oh, she right here. She I, don't, I don't see her. 
she's chilling, man. Okay, I'm. You see what I'm uh, saying? Ma'am, to be on camera. ma'am, uh, uh, whose name is on the lease? My name on the lease. Oh, I, I asked. I asked her whose name is on the lease. I ain't no liar. His name is on the lease. He pays all the bills. I'm. I don't, I'm. I'm I... You don't. You exactly. don't pay. You don't pay any bills at all, ma'am. Bruh. She don't pay no bills. I'm so that, okay, I'm, okay. Like, well, no. I'm, I'm asking her. She don't pay, no, ma'am. Old. You don't pay no bills, none, nothing at all. She, She's a stay. No. You're a stay at home woman. You want to pay some? We know you be tricking. Come on. He, he, she's a stay-at-home woman. I don't know, but anyway, I mean, the, on, hair, the hair coloring is on fleek, so we'll we'll leave it at that. Man, she just got off work, Jason. Too, but anyway, no hair let's coloring. Do that. Okay, fine. All right. Let, let's get back to the discussion, my nigga, because you ain't never showed your face in the ten-year history you've been on this bitch. So let's keep it one thousand. Okay, First off, let's let's keep let's keep this real, my broke fifty cent looking friend. If I wanted Jabra, I'd give her a better place to be, and she wouldn't be outside fighting crickets. That's we for damn certain. Doing some activities, man. Well, you and know what? If I wanted, if trick, I wanted your chick, if I wanted your every chick, time, time I would show her you know, what a new vehicle yeah, looks I'm like. I'm gonna give her some money every time. No, right? sir, I wouldn't give her money. I'm I'd give her a real, I'd give her a real I'm man to be away. next I never to. Show my face, so I'd, I'd give her a, sir, I'd give her a real man to be next to. She would see what it's like to sit. She would see what it's. Your woman would see what it's like to sit in a new car, not some 2004 beat up auction Lexus. It's not 2004, it's a 2010. It's a uh, convertible coupe, and I own it. Yep. Cash, no debt. Y'all, like followers that pay y'all, y'all, he is like they got stunt. It. He is stunting that. I got no two. Debt. His Lexus no is debt. his Lexus it's is like old enough to go to high school. Know. His Lexus is old about, enough to go to high school. About the year, I'm worried about the tear. I'm trying to get up out of here. You understand me? While y'all up here in debt, trying to stunt and act like y'all white, I'm trying to leave here and not be polite. So let's get that 100% straight, okay? So I'm not running around this bitch in debt over a shiny object. I could go get a new car right now. I don't care about that. I care about stacking up my paper, putting down 50% on the house I purchased so I'm not in debt, no mortgage. Whenever I reach a certain point, of equity in my investment. We're so all impressed over here. We're, we're all impressed I'm, I'm over really here. I'm really not trying to impress you because I have a plan which you have not mentioned. Your only plan is to beg for reparations. Okay. And then use these ad hominem attacks. To sir, me down. here. And then y'all say sir, y'all built this country, right? Sir, here's my plan. Here's my only plan. Here's my only, sir. Here's my only plan, sir. How how old is how old is that young woman next to you? Well, she is twenty three, okay. and I'm thirty one. Mm-hmm. Now, I want you all to understand something. A big mistake that young women make is they get dreamers. They get fellows. Well, first who, off, I'm not a dreamer, okay, sir. sir. First of all, you're going to be quiet. What you have are individuals here who they get young, impressionable females who don't know any better, and they grab fellows who spend their lives pipe dreaming. Now, this is a young, old nigga who is very, very good for running his mouth and talking about a bunch of crap he cannot do. She's 23 years old, highly impressionable. I don't know if she has any kids. Don't know if she got any children. However, she's sitting next to him. He's spouting off a whole bunch of Wakanda babble about a bunch of mess that he cannot do and will never be able to do. And he's sitting next to her during her prime years. She's in the prime years of her life and she's sitting next to him and his struggle LX. She's sitting next to him. Sir, I'm in the top 2% of- Sir, you are in the top 2% of dreamers and nitwits. That is where you need to be. He is not going to be anywhere else. Calm yourself down, sir. He said, well, I want to speak. No, sir. He doesn't want his woman to hear this. But by the way, yeah, you find some young female who doesn't know any better. She doesn't know any better. And she's sitting next to him. 23 years old. Telling the rest, he thinks he's going to lead the rest of us at 30 years old. He's going to teach us what? 
What is he going to teach us at 30? By the way, he's still sitting over here in America. That's the part that makes you incredulous. He's sitting in America telling her that he's going to do all these big things. He's going to do all these big, wonderful, incredible things. 30 years old. He's going to make it pop off at 30. Now, he hasn't done any of it. Not a bit of it. He hasn't done a single bit of it. And he doesn't feel like he needs to. Hell, he's got his little struggle LX. He's good. He's not trying to build anything. He's not trying to do anything more except talk about, well, you know, the reason, baby, I couldn't get these other things done is because, you know, there's a whole bunch going on there right now. There's a whole bunch going on, you know, baby. I'm trying my best right here. I'm trying my best now. I'm, I'm doing the best I can be. I'm trying to. And this is how young females end up getting themselves into trouble. So I just wanted you all to see what that was about there. I just wanted you all to see what that was about and what that was like. Because that's how a 23-year-old female ends up risking the rest of her life there. By the way, my uh, main moderator, Eve, she's drunk tonight. So Eve is drunk. Uh, she's been in that Hennessy. So, you know, she got that little crackhead weight on her. So it's, when you're 60 pounds, I understand. It's late night. She's drunk. She's falling over. I get it. I understand. Some of my other moderators and whatnot, I, I, they, size, they size 22. So I got to give everybody, I got to let everybody know. By the way, I understand that. So. Eve is, Eve is in that in, is in the fifth of that gin tonight. How, how do you get drunk like that with such little body weight? I figure you get like a shot glass and you've been and fell over. So I don't know. She weighs about 60 pounds. So it's I'm like, eh, don't, don't, don't drink too much, man. Don't, don't drink too much. Don't drink too much. She, she had to step out of the chat room for a minute so she can get lit real quick. I hope she wasn't over there at the old boy's house because he already two shots in the two sheets in the wind. Crackhead weight and then the, the alcohol too. Y'all know it's Friday. They lit. Oh yeah, Aria too, as a matter of fact. My other moderator, Aria. Yeah, she's uh she out there at the club and whatnot. You know, them dudes be laying up on her. So I've got some of the jankiest moderators. My moderators are very janky. My moderators are very janky. So Aria's trying to keep that body count down. She was it's Friday. I didn't have time to Jason. Okay. I'm trying to keep that body count down. Really? You need to keep them calories down, Aria. That's what you need to do. She she couldn't be in, she wasn't in the chat room either because she's trying to keep them calories down. She's she's failing. You y'all know that the old woman that I've fallen and I can't get up. Aria's stuck under a cupcake. It's okay. My my, my mods tonight, boy. They 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 in the struggle, y'all. They in the battle tonight. They're in the battle tonight. Let me get caller from area code 708. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Jay in Chicago. All right, Jay in Chicago. And what is your critique, hate, or debate? My critique is about the Will Smith, Chris Rock smack. I was thinking when Will Smith smacked Chris Rock, I don't think it was because he called her ball head. I think it was because they was having a historic event and he was about to get an award and then Chris Rock rained on Will Smith's parade as far as um, Jada Smith goes. We already knew she was a slut bucket, so he's going to take this opportunity to bring her into his his moment and that was wrong, so I think he got up and smacked her for it because he went on code with the other black men. You knew she was a slut, you know what happened, and then he just rained on his parade. Someone to critique that. And I could play devil advocate if you would like, sir. Okay. I, I don't get your point. Um, well, how, how does, what does it have to do with me? The critique? Oh, I thought we were critiquing about past things that we wanted to talk about. 
Okay, I'm I, uh, uh, hey, ma'am, I'm talking about, about no, no, this is, a, this is a critique, hater, debate for me, ma'am. Is there something something that I have said that you oh. specifically disagree with? Or are you drunk, too? Oh. No, I'm not drunk. Let me, okay, we can do that. So you always say something about 80% of women. Just like Nia Long. Is that her name, Nia Long, the 51-year-old you talked about yesterday? If you, um, don't, know the woman's you, know her, if right? you don't know the woman's name, how can you possibly address it? I, because I know the program and I've seen the lady and how pretty You just said, is that her? You just said, Nia Long, is that her name? Nia Long, if you don't know her name, how can I Is that you? her name? I don't know. I don't know who you're talking oh, about. Just, if you don't know, I don't know. Okay, you gotta... Okay, let's talk about the 80% that always you say women file for divorce. 80% of women do that and you always say it's because of financing. Could it actually be because they habitual cheaters and the women don't want to deal with that because health is wealth? And they don't want to tolerate this undisciplined men. Can we talk about that, sir? Okay. Who chooses the men? The, the men choose the women. No, ma'am. Who chooses to be with that man? She's got her selection of all the men. Oh. Who chooses to be with that man? Initially, the women chooses to okay, be with the so man. Okay, so the, the woman, the woman, no, there are plenty of women who choose, there are plenty of women who cheat, who help the man cheat. That's how she got them. Shout out Lala Anthony. Shout out Kim Kardashian. Shout out anybody who's been with R. Kelly, Future. Shout out Ciara. So what are you talking about? Women don't mind cheating. They cheat, they help men cheat on other women all the time. You probably have too. I have not. You from Chicago. You didn't probably cheat on a bunch of people. I am. Yeah, that you probably cheat on a I bunch. Of, you probably help dudes cheat on a bunch of people. Women don't care about cheating. I don't help dudes. Nah, I don't do any of that. But again, the men is always cheating, and I think that's why the women file for divorce because they're undisciplined men. Are okay, but the women, the women today want cheating. undisciplined men. They're they're choosing them. They're too, they initially they was doing good. So you could be you could be a nice, friendly person and next thing you know out of the blue, the man started accusing you of, of being a whore because you're friendly. But then it, it just like you said a minute ago about customer service and all of that, customer service and how nice the woman is. Yeah, you know, as a black person you could be a nice woman and friendly with the other people and next thing you know the, the black man tell out you're a whore. <laughs> like y'all come out of nowhere with these things. You know, this is out of the Okay, way. if you but got again, men, if you think... have men saying that about you, it's probably because you've done something that's told them that that's the fact. Maybe, no, is that, is that maybe the case? I don't, I don't, I really don't know why they say that, but I am a friendly person, individual, and I do like the network. Okay, but if you have, if you have I'm men, a, uh -huh. man, ma'am, if you have men repeatedly saying that, uh, repeatedly yes. accusing you of that, there must be some truth to it. Well, I would say, I wouldn't say multiple men. I say an individual say that. Why they be saying that? Who knows? Okay, and but really if, if you're upset, ma'am, if you're this uh -huh. upset about it, it, look, the bottom line is if you're a female in the 21st century having a problem finding quality men, it's because you are trying to get with the top 20% of males. The top 20% of males have options. Men with options are going to keep those options open. Which is exactly what female, okay, which is exactly what females do in their early twenties when they have all the options. When women have all the options, okay, the they have a sexual joy ride. The males in their early twenties do not have that unless it's at the select few. So when the shoe is on the other foot, the women want to cry foul. What I'm saying is, if the women want to stop that kind of thing from happening, stop joy riding in your early, in your late teens and early twenties, and that'll change the social sexual dynamic. But women are not selective about men. Women like to just go ahead and throw themselves around nowadays. But the type of men that they prefer are the reckless, non-committal. They find that to be exciting because he's desired by other women. They only complain about it when they attempt to get him to commit to just her. Then what do you know? All of a sudden, this guy who you chose because he had a bunch of options, you now want him to stop having those options. Ultimately, it, it doesn't know work what the that way. Finish line is. No, Ultimately, you know what you want it to be. It's going to be a cheater. Cheater is going to be ultimately what happens anyway. 
the mo- like okay, the ma'am. You had on yesterday. Ma'am, have you considered yes. have you considered that men just don't consider you eligible to be committed and faithful to? We went we I'm sure we went over this several times. And I know it's not me, it's not what I'm gonna tolerate. Ma'am, how problem. ma'am, how old I'm not are you? Tolerate. Ma'am, how old are you? I'm we we don't want to do this today, sir. Okay, baby, ma'am. How old? Okay, how many how many times. children do you have? No, none. They're old. Okay, nine, ma'am. Nine, you're nine, forty. Nine. You're forty three years yes. old. Men have no incentive to be monogamous with you. None. Again, what was the incentive with the program you had on yesterday? But it's the bait. The fifty one year old lady. The head coach started cheating on her for what reason? She was not out here cheating. I'm sure she was. Well, first of all, you don't know that. You don't know that. You do. don't know that. You have we no do. idea about that. You don't what know do that. We, what do we know? What do we know? You don't, what do we know? What you we know, know is what you That's know is what that know. what you know is that when she was 39 years old, she went trying to pick up a 33 year old. We do know that. He still held her down for all these We years. know so that we was, know that she was a 39 year old who went stalking a 33 year old, and then she went to go get a keep a nigga baby rather than become a wife first. That's a scandalous scheming person trying to take what they can get. And he still was with her though. He still was with it though for all these years. And ultimately, one day, what was the storyline? He cheated at the end because she got she got a baby with a man. She got a baby with a man who did not really want to be with her. That was something that she pressured into being. When he cheated, did he marry her? No. So he doesn't have to marry any man. Okay, he doesn't have to marry anybody at this point. He doesn't have to marry anyone. What we should talk about, we should talk about him being a problem then. He's but he's but he's women, not he's the, not a problem. Not he's not a problem with the women he's been laying up with. The only place it was a problem was the Boston Celtics. Uh, well, well, it should have been a problem with his mentality that he was with somebody and he didn't want to be faithful. Okay, That's how how long how long ago do you think that was that started happening? It's been happening throughout. Okay, time. and where that's and where? Really okay, big. and where has she been all this time while you're running your mouth? Where has she been? I'm sure she's been at home cooking and cleaning. Okay, and so in other so house in house other words, so in other words, you off in her business, and you're more hurt and worried about it than she is. You're more bothered about it than she is. Well, I'm bothered because we uh, coll- collectively as women, we don't got to go have a whole podcast about what's going to happen and how we should fix ourselves because we already know what the storyline going to be, the undisciplined men. So the fact that so she chose the fact ourselves. that she chose him, what about the fact that that's her taste in men to choose him? He's a professional. He was a professional You're ball not- player. Their reputations have been well known since the since 1920 and Jack Johnson and well before that. He's a professional athlete. You're going to tell me that she thought she had a choir boy? You're delusional and a liar. She knew what she had. It was You're going to sit here and act like she didn't know what no, she he had? Was, he was a workhorse. Remember, he had a workhorse. He's so a professional, he's a professional athlete. Everyone knows the reputations of professional athletes. Do they not? They all say something about black people. Okay, slow. No, 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 ma'am, ma'am, last, ma'am, last time. We're not going to argue this. Everybody knows the reputations of professional athletes for the last century, don't they? What about Russell Wilson? Ma'am, um, first of all, first of all, he married Ciara. Second of all, you don't know him personally. Third of all, even if you do try to make that characterization, he's an outlier. He's not the uh-huh. rule. He's the exception. This would be like these guys who go marry strippers or porn stars, and then they're shocked that she's still sleeping around with a bunch of people. You already know their reputation. You're trying to sit up here and be delusional, act like the the professional sports is filled with a bunch of men who have restraint and are monogamous. That is not what professional sports is filled with. Professional sports are filled with highly accomplished athletes who have a reputation for doing whatever they want, whenever they want, because women, women, you all throw yourselves at them with reckless abandon. 
Now let's talk about why women throw themselves at professional athletes with reckless abandon, shall we? Why did he accept? Ma'am, no, ma'am, why is it why is it that yet? women throw themselves at professional athletes so recklessly? Why do they do that? I don't think it's because he's the athlete. I think ma'am, like I'm asking why so do women like throw him. themselves at professional athletes so much? She liked him as a person. I don't think it was no, ma'am. I'm talking about all the him. no, ma'am, all the women. Why do all these women throw themselves at professional athletes? Because they're available. If they're on the market, why not? These these men are and not ava- these men are not available. These are some of the business. hardest people in the world to get next to. Professional athletes are very evasive and very hard to get next to. And yet women fight, literally so fist what? fight to get next to them. Why? Knowing their reputations. These are men with wives and children and babies. And yet, what is it about female culture that you all fight to get next to these men? The actual person, the character. I'm sure once they get together, he will act disciplined and do what he's okay, supposed to I'm do. Okay, I'm asking about the, the women. Why is it that these women love these professional athletes and their philandering ways so much? I'm sure because she's good enough where she thinks that he's going to be faithful. And that is the name of the game, faithfulness. But why would you? What? what since when? Ha, and since it, when have professional? And since when have professional athletes been faithful? I just you putting it into a whole. Uh, pot, she's stuttering whole, and stumbling, ma'am. Since when? Pot. Since when have professional athletes been faithful? Second time. I, I again, they all cheat. All of them okay, and from and the there's McDonald's and there the is no and there is no woman who does not know this, especially okay, so the ones who start, show up but, at the games. So you cannot claim that these women are victims of anything. They know what they're they, they are the, chasing down these type of men. They want that kind of man. You've just admitted it. Yeah, it's probably a one in a million. True, sir. I enjoy everything that you do. They're things, not sir. one. Like they're not one things. in a million. They are one everywhere. Females like men who have a name for themselves and notoriety. They don't care about faithfulness as long as they think they're the biggest beneficiary of it. But there is no woman who gets with a professional athlete who thinks that she is getting some none. Okay, Richard, you have already called in tonight. You'll have to call in some other time. One per program here. Let's get caller from area code 703. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Jason. This is Jay calling from Northern Virginia. How are you? Okay, Jay from where in Northern Virginia? <laughs> Um, you're in the Sterling area. Okay, I'm gonna try this one last time and then I gotta let you go. Where Sterling, in Northern Virginia you're calling Sterling, from? Sterling. Okay, Jay from Sterling, Sterling what, what is on your mind, such as it is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just calling in because I just had a disagreement with some of the things that you say about women, particularly black women. Hello? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you were speaking with the lady that was um, doing the Zoom, and she had the, I think they're like short dreads or short twists. And you were stating that because she's in her um, 35s, I guess um, she's not desirable to men. Is that what you were telling her? Because that's the part that I came in on. Okay, well, I named a number. Of diff- I named a number of different things right there, but certainly, you, certainly, we have some obstacles that need to be overcome for the caliber of for the <laughs> caliber I- for the caliber of man that you all would like to have. So it's not about being desirable to men. Um, every woman out there is desirable to some man. Uh, that man might be a hobo. He might be homeless. He might be mentally and emotionally deranged. Now, if you want a man who is actually accomplished, competent, and other things that actually have some sort of value to them, well, then eh, you might not qualify for him. 
Why, in your late 30s? You well, wouldn't qualify for a man? Okay, because um, uh, in your late, okay, like a man. it depends on what you mean by you qualify. Okay, it depends on what you mean by qualify for. If you just mean for sex, well, there's a wide range of men that you can have that arrangement with. If you're talking about for a committed relationship where he invests in you, that's going to be different because you're not going to be his prime candidate. So who would be his prime candidate? A female that, by definition, a female who is younger that he can start a family with. According to who? Okay, according to biology and time. By definition, as a well, woman, as a man, okay, let's try this a different way. This isn't about what you think. This is a mathematical reality. A man's going to take about uh -huh. two years to determine whether or not he wants to marry you. So that's going to be 24 months right there. Let's just say you have a female who is 34 years old. It'll be, she'll be 36 before he's comfortable marrying her, maybe 37. If he then immediately marries you, it'll be about another year before you get, before he starts a family with you, unless you all are just being really, really reckless. But so that's going to be a three year time period before you even get pregnant. So between the ages of 34, 33 and 37, you'll be 37 by then. Nine months to have the baby plus recuperation is going to be a year and a half. So it's going to be 39 before you can have birth or so before you can get pregnant a second time. Take a look at how long that window has expanded. And that's from him getting at the age of 33. Now, unless you're a chick mm -hmm. who's just going to sit up here and start creating out babies what, what from day. Saying, okay, let's not talk over the host. What you're saying is let's like, not talk over the host now. You're not that You're not baby. that drunk. It's Friday, but you ain't that drunk. And take the microphone, take your phone from up under your double chin. It's gotten real muddled. Your phone's gotten real well, muddled. Okay, let me get it from I need you to give him under your double, double chin. Okay, you thank, thank you very much. I gotta, <laughs> I'm trying to help you out here. But in any case, uh -huh. by the time that that's the math that men have to deal with. We don't deal with women's fictitious math. Uh -huh. We have to do with math in the real world. So if you're getting a chick in her mid-30s, you might get one kid out of the deal. Maybe two if you're lucky. By definition, if that's the route you're going to go, you're, it would be preferable to have a younger candidate. Simply for time's sake. Now, is it possible that you could get a female in her 30s or even late 30s? Sure it is. Is it possible that you would want to start a family with her? Well, considering the fact that risk in pregnancy increases once you get past the age of 35, that's not really, once again, that's not your best candidate because of age and biology. So that's a very real thing. Once you all get past the age of 35, the risk, pregnancy risk skyrockets to both you and the child. So that's not an opinion, ma'am. That's called reality and biology. Now, if biology hurts feelings and makes you feel bad, take it up with biology. But you're not going to argue that biology doesn't exist because, well, if I have an opinion, it shouldn't matter. Well, it does. Just like if you jump out of a What's skyscraper, Mr. gravity Mr. matters. So, ma'am, a man is going to make those decisions. A prime candidate is not going to be in her mid-30s. Is it possible? Sure. But we're going to be very measured under that environment. There's not a lot um, to what's work the advancement with. of science. So you're Are relying you on the you you're relying on the talk. you're relying on the advancement of science, something you have no control over. There's plenty of ways for a woman to have um, for a woman to have a child over the age of 35. There's not plenty of ways. There's not plenty of ways to do that. There's, well, there's only two ways. ways. There are only two ways to do that. Okay. And the risk factors actually do ways. not the risk. There are no guarantees. You're sitting there acting like doctors have conquered <laughs> pregnancy mortality. That's a lie. You don't know anything. You need to go Google something. There's any registered nurse will tell you there isn't any magic formula. Black women are still more, have more uh, mortality during pregnancy than any other group. The numbers haven't really fallen that much. You need to consult some statistics and some health, some, uh, I was, I was going to say medical health professionals, but mental health might fit in there too. You, you want to talk to some medical professionals about that. But You're acting this, as if this has been conquered just, and it has I'm trying to have a conversation with you. What is this? What are, why are you attacking my mental status? Ma'am, because what, what, what you just said is a, what you just illness? said is a lie. 
You're there lying. Are for a woman in her mid to um late thirties, in order for her to have a child. Okay, ma'am. Okay, what? Eggs, tell me what the. Tell me what you can. Tell me what you can do to a woman to make pregnancy mm -hmm. safer for her after the age of thirty-five. Go. To make it safer for yes, her? Yes, make it less of a physical well, risk to her, her life or the baby over the age of 35. What can medical oh, science okay. do to oh, make it okay. less risky? Okay. Yeah, there, there's there's um, there's quite a bit of things you can make sure name that you're, um, you name them. your health and your name, younger, name in your younger them. age. Name but them. you don't you don't a woman doesn't have to physically have a child. Ma'am, no, no, no. Name to, no, you said medical science has come a long way. Tell me how medical science has made giving birth safer for women over the age of thirty five. Such and such that women can freeze their eggs. Freezing their eggs, she still got to give birth. She surrogate. still has to give birth, ma'am. Huh? She still has to give birth. No, well, you can have someone else. Um, you can have a surrogate. Okay, that's only if the man agrees to it. Well, if he loves, I mean, if he wants to be with that woman. You're not the one who decides that. If the man is like, I don't feel comfortable with another woman giving birth to my child. So take a look at your feminist chauvinism going off here. You're trying to tell a man what he should want. Well, if you love her, you'll do what she wants. Excuse me, the man's supposed to be leading, isn't he? Well, he should lead. So isn't it the woman? Um, so shouldn't the woman be catering to what he wants? But you started with, well, if he why loves her, he'll cater? do what why she wants. Why can't they cater to what each other wants? Why because you can't do, about what a man because wants? you cannot do both. And if he is the head of household and the leader, what does that word mean, ma'am? So in order for a woman to be with a man, she would have to um, lose who she is, she would have to have low self-esteem. In other words, she has to be submissive to a man just to be with a man. Is that even worth it? No, man. First of all, first of all, for you, you for you, it's not worth it. No, for you, may, it's not worth it, ma'am. Ma'am, anyway. ma for you, it's who not worth it. Ma'am, for you, for you, it's not worth it. How old are you? I'm in my 40s. Yes, you you sound about 50. <laughs> I'm actually 40. You sound about 50. I'm talking about what? You sound about 50. Oh, that's the first because I never heard that before. Yeah, you, well, you've heard it a few times. You are correct. You've heard it a few times. Old, so you're right. You've heard it a few okay, times. You, right. you sound, I am about you are I'm old as hell, and, and that's why you're well, what, jaded what, and trying what, to, ma'am, be yeah. quiet. Well, you are minute. old as hell and you're I trying to boss men around. And this is why no man committed to you. I'm not trying you. to boss men around. I'm just trying to peep women on game. Ma'am, you're not, I've you're, you here. can't I've peep any here. women on game. You failed the game. How are you going to teach a woman anything? I you failed. failed the game. I have a child. I had my Where's child your husband? I've been married to the same man for over 20 years. You're married to so him, right? You're married to him now? Yes, I am. You're a to you're a now. liar. Put him on the phone. The same man. You're a liar. Put I'm him on the, put phone. My husband on the phone. The phone. You're a liar. What, what I'll pay you. you I'll pay you twenty five dollars. Put him on the phone right now. You're a liar. How are you gonna give me twenty five dollars? Give me your cash app, PayPal, Venmo. I'll pay you whichever you want. Twenty five dollars. Is that all you got, Jason? Come on now. You uh, can do better, ma'am. Okay, I'll pay you fifty dollars. I'll pay you fifty dollars. No, give me a thousand. To talk to thousand, to talk to your make believe to talk to your make believe husband, you're a liar. Give me a thousand. Oh, here we go with a make believe husband. Ma'am, you're a liar. Ma'am, you're a liar. You're years. a liar. I'll pay you a hundred dollars. Put your husband on the phone, you liar. A thousand, Jason. I okay, thousand. you're a liar. Now the reason I'm gonna disconnect your call is because you're mentally unstable and you lied. If you had told the truth, I would have let I you stay on the phone. But you're a liar. So no, I am not going to let you stay on the phone and lie on somebody's son out there somewhere and claim you got a husband that you don't have. This is the way I'm on the phone. He can't prove it. Oh, I'll pay you $100. Put him on the line. I'll pay you $100 right now. Put him on the phone. Why would I need to do that right now? I thought you had a husband. I thought you two lived together. At least that simp ass delusional anime geek. At least he had a female next to him that he put on the camera and at least proved it. At least he can say that much for himself. At least he can say that. His lazy Lexus, at least he at least he could do that. I, I got to give him that much. At least he could do that one. He, he could make that one happen. She's sitting there and couldn't make it occur. 
Now I got somebody on the line. If you're calling from a blocked number or something, I'm not going to take your call. So you need to unblock your number. If you're calling internationally, you need to let the mods know in the chat room that you're calling internationally. But if you're calling from a blocked number, I will not take your call. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop your call. If your call drops, you're one of the, that means your number is blocked. You need to call from an unblocked number. I have no problem putting you on here, but you need to go ahead and make sure you're up front. Let me get caller from area code 402. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you calling from? Caller from area code 402. Last try. You're on live. Okay. Caller from area code 402 has been abducted. They were doing okay there for a minute. Then they fell off. Okay. Person from the block number keeps trying to call back. We are not going to take your call here. So unblock your number or good night. Don't know why you would even want to try that. That's silly. Sometimes it hurts feelings. Sometimes it does. Melanated vessel because the truth, sometimes the truth isn't good enough. The reason why she has to lie, because sometimes the truth just ain't good enough. Sometimes they need something better than the truth. So it's like the, the truth is not good enough. So they got to do something totally different. Totally different. We're doing tonight's uh, critique, hate or debate program. And it's going some feelings going to be caught. Some folks are going to be upset about that. And that's OK, too, because you can't fix anything if you don't have an open discussion about it. You can't fix anything if you don't have an open discussion about it. So for those of you, if you think that uh, going to Wakanda is the best option for you here, if you think there's a place on this planet you can flee white supremacy, go ahead and run for it. Although, amazingly enough, all the people who claim we can flee, they're all sitting right here. And for everybody else here, just understand, ladies, this is tough love. Ladies, this is tough love because you know you're out of line. You know you're out of line. You know you're unhappy. You know you're not digging it. You know it's not okay. You know it's a problem. And you want somebody who's going to keep it real with you. You want somebody who's going to keep it real with you. You want somebody who's going to actually tell you what it is for a damn change. Not these old suck butt dudes who sit up here and keep telling the lies you want to hear. You need somebody who's going to lay it out down the line and say exactly what it is. That's what's been missing. What's been missing is a man who's going to tell you exactly what the truth is and isn't going to sugarcoat it and say exactly what needs to be done. When these fellas get on the line daydreaming and fantasizing about, well, you know, if we could just get back to Ghana or Uganda or Tanzania or Zanzibar, if we could do that right there, everything would be fine. I sit there and shut that bull crap down straight from the jump. Dude, you're 30 years old sitting there with a 23-year-old chick. No wonder you ain't striving. You ain't doing nothing else. You, what you're doing is impressing her. What you're doing is impressing her. That doesn't impress us over here. Just because you got her impressed, that's not impressing us. She doesn't know that you're talking about a bunch of mess you can't do. She actually thinks you got potential. Remember, I covered this before on my patron. She thinks you got potential. She thinks you actually have the potential to make good on some of this stuff. She's 23. She ain't seen nothing. She doesn't know this fella can't actually make good on none of this. She doesn't know there isn't some mystical, magical nirvana overseas that's going to happen. He can't make good on any of this. But she's sitting next to him. So that's why I'm calling out straight up and just saying, hey, dude, look here. You, you, you chick, you wish she's 23. She ain't seen nothing. If all she's seen is you, she hasn't seen anything. Hadn't seen nothing and not used to that. You ain't used to anything. Okay, I get it. I understand. But I'm not going to sugarcoat it either. I'm not going to sugarcoat it either. They get them a little old young, light-skinned female, and then next thing they know, they're going to town. He's like, I'm 30, she's 23. He's going to sit up here and 
leave her in a holding pattern for the next seven damn years. She's going to be in a holding pattern for seven years. She's 23 now. She's going to be calling me when she's 27. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you calling from? Yes, uh, this is Brittany calling from Houston. All right, Brittany from Houston, what's on your mind? Yeah, Jason, you talked to my boyfriend years ago, and I don't know if you remember him or not, but he was running on the back patio down the street. Oh, I remember you. Yeah, just how things turn out there. Well, you know. What was the deal with that Lexus? Well, his mama gave it to him, really. I didn't want to say nothing. He was in his mama gave it to him, so. He said it was a 2010. It was really a 2008, Jason, but I want to know how can I get me a quality man now? Baby, you've been, you've been laid up under him for half a decade. What'd you expect me to tell you? You've been up under him for half a decade. What am I supposed to do with this? You want to know how they end up calling me years later? That's how they end up calling me years later. She's 23 now. She'll be 27 then trying to figure out what the cheat code is. She'll be like, what's the cheat code? Baby, look here. 23. Keep your options open. That's the cheat code. Do not get with a male who is telling you about what his ambitions are. Get with a fellow who's delivering. Do not get with a fella telling you that your solutions are on the other side of the world. A competent man is supposed to bring the solutions to you. A competent man is supposed to have you on a damn worldwide goose chase. A competent man is supposed to bring solutions to you. A competent man is supposed to have you running all over the world chasing a solution. In a place he's never been for something he's never done. You all want to know where the 23-year-old chicks are? Yeah, the 30-year-old guys are jumping on the 23-year-old chicks so they can go ahead and grab them and have them set out. And then when she looks up in a few years, ooh, where'd all the time go? Where'd all the time go? So there's, uh, understand something. Like there's guys in her age group. She's 23 years old. There are fellows who are 23 years old. They're wondering why in the world she's not do doing more for them. It's like, okay. These fellas sit up here and whatnot, and it's like, all right, let's go ahead and keep them in the holding pattern. She'll be 23 years old. This nigga sitting up here slick talking and every damn thing else. Then they'll be coming back seven, eight damn years later. Talking about what happened when they were younger, but they knew it all. Now, there's another thing right there. Y'all didn't see her on camera, but she's a little chick wearing glasses. I'm like, okay. These little think they think they little smart little nerdy chicks wearing she's a little 23 year old young thing wearing glasses. She'll be hollering back at me at 27, 28, trying to figure out how to unscrew this. Hey Jason, what can I do to unscrew the last five, six wasted years? This guy was daydreaming, pipe dreaming, talking about a bunch of stuff. I mean, well, he was really Afrocentric. He's not Afro nothing. Twenty-three years old. You want to know why I laid down the medicine as hard as I do? Because I've met a bunch of them. Let me go ahead and lay that out here tonight. Let me go ahead and get this off my chest right quick here. You know, I've got a number of young ladies that I met on Facebook a decade or so ago. And I'm talking about they were in their early 20s. They were like 20 and 21. 20 and 21. They were they were in their early 20s when I met them. And I was just like, okay, we'll see how this pans out. I'm telling y'all right now, it's a decade later. They are 28, 29. A couple of them are 30 years old now. You don't even want to ask them where the hell the last decade went. You don't want to ask them where the last decade went. Some of them got kids. Amazingly enough, most of them don't. But they got a lot more damn road miles on them. 
They've been running and playing the field so long, they don't know how to come out of it. They've picked up a bunch of bad habits. They picked up a bunch of neuroses. They're not able to commit to anybody or anything. Everything in life is with trepidation. They can't really pick a career. They can't pick a direction. That's what happens when a woman screws off her 20s. When she squanders her 20s, she comes into her 30s just starting out trying to make it. To my little red bone chick, you know who you are. I warned you that was going to happen. Well, now it's happening. But you knew it all then too. Just saying. You knew it all then too. There's a whole bunch of young know-it-all females that when it finally runs out, they come scrambling for somebody with some sense. To sit up here and say, okay, can you explain the game? I explain the game to you, but just because I can explain it to you doesn't mean there's actually an answer. I remember an old movie that was on Showtime years and years ago starring Kurt Wood Smith. It was a short film. There was a short film contest they had back then starring Kurt Wood Smith. Remember it on Showtime, for those of you who remember? It was a film called 12.01 p.m. You can go look it up for yourself. Twelve oh one p.m. It was decades ago. It was about time going in a loop. Every day at 12.01 p.m., time would reset itself. There was a scientist who had figured out that it was happening. By the end of the film, Kurt Wood Smith, he figures out where the scientist is. He goes to the man. He lets him know your prediction came true. The antimatter universe has hit our universe. And now we're in a constant time loop, just like you predicted it would be. What can I do? And the scientist looks at him and says, I mean, because nobody believed him because the rest of the world didn't know he was the only one who knew. And the scientist, when he convinces the scientist that it was true, he's like, I, 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 your, your prediction came true. The world's in a time loop right now. And what can I do? And the scientist looks at him and he just shakes his head. Nothing. There's nothing you can do. There's a bunch of females I know here right now. They got their pets. They got their plants. They got their bastard kids. They got their pharmaceuticals, pets, plants, and pills. Y'all, we got a new three Ps for you here. They got their pets, plants, and pills. In their 30s, in their 40s, trying to cope with a broken psyche because every man before now lied to them so much so to the point that they can't stand a man who won't lie to them. So now it, it shocks the conscience and it's physically painful to have a man who isn't going to lie to you because they're so used to getting men to just give them whatever they want, any kind of way they want, not realizing these fellas are taking time from you. And did you hear all of these old, bitter, worn out little biddies called in tonight in their 40s and 50s? mad and angry as hell. Why come these guys won't sit up here and commit? You know why the hell they ain't gonna commit to your ass, ma'am? Let me show you why they're not gonna commit because they didn't have to. This was you when you were 23. This was you when you were 25 with your girls at the turn up spot. This was you when you were 27. And it was all good. This was you when you thought you could get away with it. This was you on Instagram telling dudes to kiss your ass and it's just sitting out there for them to suck on. That was what you were doing then when you could get away with it. Now you're telling me I got to sit up here and come up with a way to get the world to ignore that? Hell no. 
You're in your 40s now. You're talking about commitment. You wasn't trying to get dudes to commit to you when you were 22 years old and could wear that G-string and that slingshot. You wasn't trying to get anybody to commit to you then. You weren't looking for a commitment then. You were looking for a good time. You were looking for a sponsor. You didn't want commitment then. How you going to turn up 10 years later and start on 20 years later and start trying to demand commitment now? You 20 years down the damn line, now you want to discuss commitment. But when your butt cheeks didn't have any cellulite in them, you weren't looking for commitment then. Okay, when you play, you pay. And if you cannot muster together the character and the will to learn this early, just understand you will pay with the rest of your life. Young women, understand something. Five years costs a man much less than it costs you. You think you're coming up slick and you're not. Five years of your life will cost you much more than it costs the man you're with. Your five years doesn't cost us nearly as much as it costs you. It costs you a lot more than it costs us. It costs you a lot more. And if you let some slick talking dude, because you some new chick out here, you let him sit up here and indulge your darker urges, placate your little bloated ego, there goes your six, seven years. Because it's really not a decade. It's really going to be about six or seven years. And then that's it. You're screwed. If you have a baby, you're done. He helped, he's helped indulge all of your darker fantasies and all of your darker urges. And then when it blows up in your face, then you think you're going to punish the rest of male society. I'm going to make all of y'all pay for what he didn't do. So the guy that you chose and that you preferred, you're going to make every other man pay for that. That's why I tell you, a female thinks that when she lose, when she gets with a loser, that the next man's going to pick up where that guy left off at and give her credit for time served. It's like, oh, no, you start from the bottom again, buck private. You start from the bottom as a buck private, but the top rank you can gain uh, goes down every time. Ladies, it's a dangerous game. Ooh, I lost a few viewers when I said that. I lost some viewers when I said that. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear that this will never end. They want to hear that there will always be time. They want to hear that it will always be all right. That's a lie. I can tell you that, but that's a lie. Let's go ahead and go to the phone lines here. Let me get... Call of Miracle 347, you're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? You're on live. Take the crack pipe out of your mouth. Yo, yo. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yo, yo. <clears throat> yo, what up, what up? Hold on my phone. Hold on, hold on. Hey. Let me call right back. Let me call right back. Please. Okay. We're closing down the phone lines tonight. Um, everybody apparently has gone and gotten their sack of crack, meth, fentanyl, or whatever. So we're going to go ahead and shut that down here tonight. I know we've been hurting feelings here, but it is in your best interest. I'm glad you all going ahead and gave us a call tonight. Glad to have you all with us here this evening. If you are new here to the business, welcome to the program that laid the foundation upon which all of your YouTube favorites are hating daily. This is the spot for you here. So click that red subscribe button, click that yellow notification bell, join us each and every time. And if you haven't been to our patron, we're going to be doing that here tomorrow on Saturday about noontime. So go ahead and make sure you join us for that as well. It's been a session of tough love here tonight, but definitely warranted for it. And I am the only personality that invites people on to go ahead and do that kind of thing. So don't be a stranger. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up for you here. I want to thank everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program here on PayPal, Cash App, or Super Chat. Thank you very much for that here. So our dog 99 Freeman, everybody else here on Super Chat and Cash App, PayPal, thank you very much for your support. We appreciate that. I want to thank all of you for joining, tuning in here tonight. 
And this concludes tonight's broadcast of The Business. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, Mr. Jason Black. And until next time, my brothers and my sisters from around the world, remember, handle your business or your business will handle you.